the ducks and beavers have battled on the gridiron to settle bragging rights in the state of Oregon. Some years, that's all that was at stake, while other years, more was on the line. Today is one of those special days, as both these arch rivals square off, trying to extend their own season while ending their opponents. It's one game to determine who gets into a bowl and who's sent home for the holidays. Get ready for a Northwest Grudge match. It's Oregon versus Oregon State, the Civil War, next on FSN. Welcome everyone to Oregon State University, Corvallis, Oregon, on a cool, clear, crisp Oregon afternoon. All the pomp and circumstance of a rivalry weekend. Ducks and Beavers trying to coexist for an afternoon. The emotion is high as Kiyosara is proud to present College Football Saturday. This afternoon, the Ducks of Oregon invade to take on the Beavers of Oregon State. Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Bill McDonald. Well, most of you just saw the big game. Now get ready for the Civil War. These two teams have been going at it since 1895, uh, 1894, rather, the longest-running college football series on the West Coast. Just take a look at the numbers. The Ducks have come out on top 54 times, the Beavers 43. There have been 10 ties. But John Jackson, my partner, you look at the bottom number. The home team has won the last seven. In fact, the Ducks haven't won here since 1996. But currently right now, the Oregon State team is the one on roll. They have won four out of the last five. Their only loss was to number one USC, and they are led by their record-setting quarterback, Derek Anderson. Derek Anderson has been phenomenal. He's had a phenomenal career as well. When you look inside the numbers, you see he's over 10,000 yards already. That ranks number four in the Pac-10 all time. He's only one of six quarterbacks to ever throw for over 10,000 yards. Touchdown passes as well. Among the elite, he has been phenomenal. He has had an outstanding career. Coach Mike Riley has said that he has propelled himself to one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. His decision-making is the key today. If he's able to make decisions, get the ball to his receivers, not throw interceptions, they're going to be tough to beat. The pride of Scapoose High. He has been a little inconsistent. And speaking of inconsistency, that's exactly how you could describe the Oregon passing game. So once again, they rely heavily on their running back, and they've got another 1,000-yard runner this year in Terrence Whitehead. A great year for Terrence Whitehead. He has been equally as impressive, over 1,000 yards. The season really changed around when he walked into Mike Bellotti's office. He said he wanted to be recognized among the elite backs in the nation. He's put this team on their back five 100-yard games this year already. Here's the deal. These two schools do not like each other. Trust me, it's the Civil War. Oregon and Oregon State. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back on FSN Coast to Coast Live, we'll kick it off with the Civil War. See you in a minute. Approaching the kickoff in the Pac-10 Conference. Game three of our triple header, the 108th Civil War, Oregon at Oregon State. Welcome inside our college football studios in Los Angeles. Alongside the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow and Billy Ray Smith. Hello, gentlemen. I'm Mike Goldberg. All right, USC is idle. Those on the Orange Bowl collision course with the Trojans. Number two, Oklahoma at Baylor. Senior to senior, White to Clayton. What a great throw. He does throw a great ball down the field. But hey, the receiver, great job pulling the ball in, staying in bounds. When things are going Peterson well in the air, Jason White didn't have a great day throwing the football, but Adrian Peterson had a great day running the football. Huge hole, great job at a huge offensive, senior-led led offensive line by Oklahoma. And this, oh, you know, yeah. two don't break the sweat. 40 yards, three touchdowns, Bob Stoops undefeated regular season third time. The other number two, Auburn at Alabama, the Iron Bowl. Alabama alum Broadway Joe Namath on hand to fire up the troops here on Rivalry Day. How about the senior, the Cadillac, Colonel Williams? Did you see the pancake blocks by that offensive line? Spectacular blocking. And senior quarterback Jason Campbell, the sophomore wide receiver Courtney Taylor in the end zone, 32-yard touchdown. Tommy Tuberville in Auburn win the Iron Bowl 21-13. An update in the game that many of you have been watching on FSN. Senior Reggie Robertson takes it in for number four Cal. They are well on their way to victory. 40 points again. And shoot the cannon in beautiful Berkeley. 
All right, let's talk about our game, Oregon, Oregon State. Bill McDonald talked about it. It's been the Beavers who have been on a roll. So does Oregon have the ability to stop that roll, winning four of the last five other than losing to USC? Well, be, we're just rolling roll along rolling, right rolling, here, right now. Day. <laughs> you talk about Oregon, you're talking about passing the football, Kellen Clemens, but you've got to run the football also at Oregon to have some balance. And that comes from Terrence Whitehead. You heard him talk about him in the opening. He's had five 100-yard games this season, 5'10", 207 pounds. You know, great balance, ability to have a nice low center of gravity and the ability to plant and cut back against the grain. He really has changed things around BR for Oregon. Once that running game got going, a lot of pressure off the quarterback. You want to talk about changing things around this is a team Oregon State started off the season one and four they've won they've won four out of the last five and now listen a huge huge thing going on at Oregon State four players suspended in the last week uh, it's going to see uh, we're going to see how the Beavers are going to respond to that today the real key to this rivalry the winner is bowl eligible the loser sees their season end in the Civil War we'll see you later on the Cialis halftime report let's get the game three of our doubleheader Billy Mack and John Jackson are standing by enjoy the first time Rivalry Week continues here across the country and throughout the Pac-10, live on FSN, 108th version of the Civil War. Billy Mack and J.J. welcome you back. First time ever that these two teams have had similar records coming in to the big game. Oregon Ducks and the Oregon State Beavers both at 5-5. Five and five. In his 10th year, J.J., head coach at Oregon, Mike Bellotti. What a great job he has done with this program. Really turned this program around. Coach Mike Bellotti, one of the best coaches in the Pac-10, has the longest tenure, 10 years of any coach in the Pac-10. He's been around a long time. Second go-round on the other side for Oregon State, and he grew up with this rivalry, Mike Riley. Yeah, one of the best coaches again in the Pac-10. A great offensive mind. Coach Riley has a very dynamic offense. We'll get a chance to see him open it today with a great quarterback yeah. in Anderson. Yeah, it's dynamic. He would love to be able to run the football, though. It has just gone by the wayside. He's been throwing it all over the yard. We'll see if they can establish some sort of a running game. Everybody on their feet. Glad you are with us throughout the country and especially here in the great state of Oregon. I know there's a lot of good folks in living rooms across the state. Some from Oregon, some from Oregon State. Let's see if they can get along for just three and a half, four hours this afternoon. This is what they wait for all season long. It's going to be taken by the Ducks at the five-yard line. Out to the 25-yard line, and that's where they will set up shop with Ryan Shaw bringing it back for Oregon. Kellen Clemens, the quarterback, 6'2", 215, and a junior. He's completed over 61% of his passes out of Burns, Oregon. Of course, that's uh, in the east part of the state. He and Derek Anderson have known each other for a long time. They've been their friends and rivals, and they get together for the final time. And a very versatile quarterback. They have to not only worry about his arm, but also his running ability. He is a great runner from the pocket and by design. Beavers would love to make him just strictly a pocket passer. Man in motion out of the I formation. They're going to give it up to Whitehead. He'll try the left-hand side, get about three, four yards before he's driven back by a pile of Beavers. Led by Trent Bray and Curtis Coker. It'll be second down and about six for the Ducks. Expect the Ducks to get Terrence Whitehead started early and often in this game for a couple reasons. First of all, he is a great dynamic back, really a self-made back, breaks a lot of tackles, but most importantly, he helps balance up this offense and open passing lanes for Clemens to throw as the defense starts to commit to the run. In fact, Whitehead was originally recruited as a defensive player and uh, for need purposes was converted into a tailback, and he's ran the ball obviously exceptionally well out of the offset eye. Clemens once again up the middle Whitehead burrows across the 30 yard line he's about a yard or short uh, yard or so short of the 35 which would mean a first down it'll be third down for the Ducks of Oregon another thing for fans to watch as this game unfolds offensively for the Oregon Ducks is there'll be a lot of movement prior to the ball being snapped motion shift all that to keep the defense off balance and to throw off some of the keys for the defense as they try to zoom in on this offensive tendency. Beavers' best third down defense in the conference. Opponents are converting only 26% of the time. On third down and three. Clemens will throw for the first time. He's flushed out and down he goes! Keith Ellison has got him. 
And for the Ducks, they've just given up their 35th sack of the year. That's the worst in the conference. They have had a problem protecting Clemens. A lot of times he takes some of the heat for holding on to it too long, but not in this case. No time to throw. He had to try to scramble out of the pocket and the pursuit by Ellison for his fourth sack of the season. David Dittman, who's coming off of maybe his best game under huge pressure, run into, flag is down. And a muffed punt, and another flag is down at the 42-yard line. So this one will take a couple of moments to sift through. Without question, question rather, David Dittman was uh, run into, whether he was roughed or just run into, that'll be the question. Strotter at the other end, muffed the punt, but got his own fumble back. Now they will confer our officiating crew here at Reeser Stadium. Half of this place will be torn down on Monday. Personal foul. It's going to go both ways. Now these two teams, the most penalized teams in the conference, Oregon State uh, penalized more than anybody in Oregon right behind him. So we shouldn't be shocked that two minutes into the game we've got offsetting penalties. Here's the explanation. On defense, number seven. Also on the play, interference with the opportunity to catch a kick on the offense. These two penalties offset, repeat fourth down. Offsetting penalties will we'll re-kick it force the Ducks to kick again. Mike Riley, now this Oregon State team has been the worst in the Pac-10 in penalties the last three seasons, and believe it or not, this year they're better than the previous two, so I guess they're moving in the right direction. They're gaining on the pack, but they're just not where they want to be. 77 yards per game, they give up via the penalty, and so you can do the math and realize that that adds up to a lot of yardage for the opponent. Strada will go back. He's a freshman now, averaging just over five yards of return, and for Dittman, he's a walk-on J.C. punter. He has the worst average in the conference, and now flags are down again before we can even snap the football. Full start. Full start. Ducks. Five yards, Five yards further down. to their own end zone. So we're just two minutes in. Glad you're with us. We are live in Corvallis. Just getting going. Fourth down. And the Beavers chomping at the bit to get their first hands at the football. Dittman will drive it from around the 10-yard line. Here comes the pressure again. Strotter calls for a fair catch, and he takes it at the 46-yard line, and that's where Oregon State will have the football their first time in great field position. Dittman, 46-yard punt. No return. There he is, Derek Anderson, 6'6", 240, senior, playing his final game, one of eight senior starters to be honored before the kickoff. Last year versus the Ducks threw for 271 yards. He's fourth all-time Pac-10 career list in yardage with over 10,500 yards and 71 career touchdowns, which places him fifth all-time in the conference. With just a single setback, Anderson, what a shot, will throw. Steps up and he'll run. Dances across midfield and down he goes at the 42-yard line. They will move the chains for Oregon State. Jerry Matson makes the stop for Oregon. We welcome the rest of the country. You folks at Oregon have uh, been with us from the beginning. I'm Bill McDonald along with John Jackson. This, folks, is the Civil War as our college football Saturday presented by Kiyosera continues. Oregon had the football, went three and out. There were a couple of penalties uh, on the punt. Now after uh, another punt, Oregon State has the football. And on their first play, Derek Anderson, their quarterback, just scrambled for 13 yards. Now first down at the Oregon 41. Throws it to the near side, and it'll be to the 30-yard line, and another first down to George Gillette. He's going to have to come up with a huge game. Let's take a look at the starting lineups here this afternoon. Offensively, Derek Anderson, as it's brought to you by Keo Serra. Anderson from Scappoose, Oregon, the 6'6 senior offensive line. Last year, the trench war was won by Oregon. This is a young O-line with the key spots. Uh, obviously needing to come up huge. George Gillette, we mentioned, without Anthony Wheat Brown in the lineup, he was suspended with that uh, fight back on the 12th in Corvallis. Gillette has to come up huge. 
up the middle. It's Dwight Wright who gets a couple of yards. And Alodi Nada, the big man in the middle for the Ducks, makes the stop. Keo Serra brings it to the defense of Oregon. This is a very active front, and they want to rattle the quarterback early. Devin Long, sensational. Rushing the passer from the outside with seven and a half. They're not deep at linebacker. It was a question mark coming into the year, but they played pretty well. And these folks right here in the secondary, they're going to see a lot of business. Derek Anderson, J.J., throws the ball an average of 43 times a game. That's an average wide open offense. On second down and nine from the Ducks 29. Anderson sidesteps, throws near the end zone, incomplete. There's a little bit of bumping going on at the goal line, but no flag down, double covered down at the end zone. Mike Haas, the number one receiver, the 6'1 junior out of four. And this is what Derek Anderson has to be careful of, is throwing the ball into double coverage. You see, he's trying to find a way to get rid of the ball, and he goes to his favorite receiver, Mike Haas, but there's double coverage there, Billy. That's a dangerous sign. They don't want Anderson to throw into double coverage. The key to this offense is to be able to drop back and read which receivers are singled up and find those open targets to throw to. Third down efficiency last year, the Beavers were second in the pack 10 They dropped significantly, only seventh in the conference right now. They face their first third down, third and about nine from the 29. Play action, pressure on, screen in the middle, wide open. There's the tight end. Joe Newton, six foot seven, what a target. The sophomore, his 45th catch of the year. It's good enough to move the chains again for the Beavers. 45 receptions, you're right, Billy. A great season so far for Newton. Now, with the absence of a run game, this is what Oregon State tries to do to offset the defensive line rush. Inside screen to Newton. So look for screens, look for draws today from Oregon State to keep the defense from Oregon honest. That's a nice play, very efficient. Newton with the big catch. JJ, talk about this red zone offense. It's something that Mike Riley works on from the second day in camp, and they are so good. Number one in the pack, kick. Up the middle. Right. Doesn't get much. It'll be second down from there. During the week, I talked to Mike Riley and asked him what's the key to the success of this red zone offense. They score 82.4% of the time they enter the red zone. He says the key is practice. They practice it in the spring, the fall, and then, of course, throughout the season. They spend probably more time than the average Pac-10 team on that red zone offense. How about this? 100% of the time they scored in the red zone, 19 out of 19 since their bye week on October the 9th. And that was a significant week for Oregon State. That basically turned their season around. They were 1-4 and four at the time. On second down and goal. Ducks are bringing it. Anderson over the middle. Caught. Marcel Love out of the slot position, but he's short. As his knee down is, uh, his knee is down there. The JC guy who really runs hot and cold. He is short of the goal, as mentioned. They'll spot it at the three. It'll be third down from there. One weapon that Derek Anderson is missing today, Anthony Wheat Brown. You talked about that he's suspended for this game, and that is big because he had 11 catches for 117 yards a week ago and really added that extra dimension, that extra complement to half. So it's going to be important for Marcel Love, George Gillette, and Hawkins to step up big today. Third down and goal. No score, first quarter from Corvallis. Anderson, straight drop, looks over the middle, throws incomplete behind the intended receiver. Which was Marcel Love again. And it'll be fourth down. The inside route, an inside dig route by Love. And Anderson's just going to miss him. He had him there in front. He puts it a little bit behind Love, so he could not come up with that catch. But it's a tough throw in that kind of traffic. The quarterback has to create his own passing lane, and it looked like Anderson did not have one on that throw. And good coverage by Anthony Trucks, who's very good coming out of his linebacker spot. Here is Alexis Cerna who, of course, survived the three missed extra points against LSU, and he is having a fabulous season since then. And Lou goes to the semifinalist, and he knocks it through. 3 nothing Beavers. We're just getting going from Corvallis. College Football Saturday on FSN is being presented by Kyocera Wireless Phones. All the features, none of the hassles. And brought to you in part by Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. By Napa Auto Care Centers. Napa, get the good stuff. And by Zales, the diamond store. The 108th renewal of the Civil War, the longest college football series on the West Coast. For those of you who joined us late, just a couple of quick notes. They've been going at it since 1894. 
first time that this game has pitted these two teams with the same record. And the return, Kenny Washington brings it out close to the 30-yard line. Kia Sarah starting lineup offensively. First of all for Oregon, uh, Kellen Clemens, the quarterback, 6'2", junior. Did not play well last week against UCLA. Took a step backwards. Offensive line underachieved all year long, giving up more sacks than anybody in the conference. Demetrius Williams is back. And how huge is that? With him out of the lineup, they do not have the go-to guy in the deep threat, but he's back. He's been bothered by a turf toe all year long. Also back is Tim Day, their outstanding tight end. You might recall he had two touchdowns in the first half against Cal when Oregon did a lot of damage. That game where they nearly beat the Golden Bears. Whitehead up the middle. Kicks it to the outside. He's got room. Little stutter step across the 40. Whitehead 45, and he's dragged out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Sabi Piscatelli finally made the stop, the sophomore from Boca Raton, Florida. Defensively, the Beavs of Oregon State. Up front, they got to come up big. Bill Swancutt, career sack leader at Oregon State. Linebackers, Trent Bray. He's an animal in the middle. Keith Ellison shows you some speed. They've got two great corners in Browner and Williams. Whitehead, 17 yards on the last carry. First down, Ducks. Now at the 46. Clemens, versatile athlete, can run at a moment's notice. Has it, throws, got a man, caught! 30-yard line. That's Demetrius Williams, leading receiver, the junior. Missed all but one play of the Cal game, all of the UCLA game, and J.J. is a former receiver. You know what he means. 24 yards. They need him because in the week that he was out, they did not have a receiver that really stepped up into this role of the go-to guy, the playmaker. Watch Clemens in the pocket, able to buy himself some time, step up in the pocket, and then he has one of the strongest arms in the Pac-10 and delivers a strike to Williams. Ducks coming right back after Oregon State gets on the board first. Oregon State used to fast starts this year. We'll tell you about that in a moment. They'll move the offset eye. Clemens might have been a broken play. Now, he will run by design quite a bit. I don't think that was a design play to run. Alvin Smith brings down the scrambling quarterback. Well, you saw Clemens starting to check off that play at the line of scrimmage before it started, and with that, there was some confusion in the backfield. As you mentioned, Clemens a very good runner. 216 yards on the season, but that's not. that also includes his sack numbers as well, but a very versatile runner, something that Oregon State is very concerned with. Mark Banker says that we have to make sure we contain him this year. He had a touchdown running a year ago. Second down for Clemens. The blitz coming off the edge. Good call, but now dragged down Whitehead. They had the right play call. Trent Bray, though, second in the Pac-10, tackling with over 10 per game. What a nose for the football. He returned to his natural position this year. He was outside last year, came inside this year, and he's really blossomed. Yeah, second in the Pac-10 in tackles is Trent Bray. A great nose for the ball. 103 tackles on the season. Best thing he does is scrape to the ball and find it. Whitehead struggled for a couple there. He got his 100 yards against UCLA last week in their loss, but it was still tough. They contained him for the most part. Third down, Oregon. Again, the best third down defense in the conference belongs to Oregon State. Quick drop, pump fake, here comes the pressure. Clemens scoots to the outside, now throws wide open. Is it caught or was it on a bounce? Garen Strong, it's complete. And it's enough for a first down for the Ducks. Clemens' legs once again buying him enough time to find an open receiver. This time it's strong. He's wide open and does a nice job of coming up with that catch after slipping. Looks like this might have been close, but let's take a look. Boy, you can see why I hesitated, J.J. From where we were, I think it's impossible to tell right there. He might have benefited from the turf a little bit that time. Nonetheless, first down, Ducks. They're moving. 16-yard line. Clemens... Eye formation behind him. Here's the scripted quarterback draw. He's got room to the five-yard line. Kellen Clemens, he'll give that Beaver defense headaches all afternoon. Finally stopped by Jonathan Pollard, who is back, and that is important for the Beaver D. And as a defensive line, this is why you have to rush in your lanes against Clemens. It'll slow you down in getting pressure on Clemens 
because you have to stay in your lanes and protect against this quarterback draw. He is very effective running the ball. 6'2", 215 pounds, not afraid to take a shot as well, Billy. So he's a great runner, and that's the one thing that Oregon State is going to have to contend with all day long. Last year in this game, he passed for three TDs and ran for another against the Beavers. Take the end around, give it up to Whitehead. He pulls his way down to the one-yard line. Keith Ellison and a number of other Beavers in on the stop. Alvin Smith also getting off the pile. One thing this offensive line has been able to do throughout the season is get this running game going. Terrence Whitehead, we've talked about it, over 1,000 yards rushing this year. One change in the offensive line, Inoka Lucas is going to start at that right guard position in, in replacement of Ian Reynoso. So they want to get him into the game. He was a starting center at the beginning of the season. They got a couple of good tackles, too, in Snyder and LaGrange. De LaGrange out of Grant's pass. For the folks on the plane yesterday, I'd give him some love, and I just did. <laughs> Up the middle, Whitehead again. Hit at the line, and he's going to lose a couple of yards. Lemma, Seeger, Sir Henry Anderson, Swancutt. They led the charge up front, setting up the stone wall for Oregon State. It'll be third down and goal. We've talked about how well Oregon State is in the red zone. Offensively, they're number one in the Pac-10, but also defensively, no slouch there as well. Number two in the Pac-10 in red zone defense. So it's a very good defense, very stingy when it gets down close to the goal line. It's a veteran group. Lots of players return. Third down. And goal. Will Clemens go to the air from the four? He will. Roll right. Looking end zone. Throws. Touchdown! Tim Day. And the Ducks have the lead. Patience, patience, patience. Clemens rolls out, buys more time, and when you have this much time as a receiver, you are allowed to uncover. They did a nice job of cutting back against the flow of the grain, and you can see why it's so important to have Tim Day in the lineup. The camaraderie between him and Clemens, phenomenal. They were on the same page right there, able to read that play, that play call and that throw. Clemens gets him on top with the touchdown early. Nine plays, 71 yards, took nearly four and a half minutes. Boy, Savvy Piscatelli nearly blocked it away, but Tim Day is a big target at 6'4", 268. That's his seventh touchdown reception of the season. Lemons and the Ducks in this version of the Civil War drive right back, and Oregon has a lead here in the first. College football is brought to you by Corona, miles away from ordinary. Kick back, relax, enjoy a Corona today. Kiosera presenting another college football Saturday here live on FSN. Our Dodge scoring drive, as mentioned, nine plays, 71 yards. Day, the four-yard touchdown reception. He's back after missing time with the calf injury. Limited practice this week. Well, what a great combo of size and athleticism he brings to the game. Lamar Heron, the freshman, is one of the uh, Beavers back. This will be a squib and taken at the 18-yard line. And spun down is Heron. Big kick returner. The only one team in the Pac-10 has returned to kick off for a touchdown this year, and that's Stanford. Here's a touchdown again, JJ. Well, Clemens is going to roll, but right here, you can see in the back of the end zone, if you can freeze it right there, he has covered his day. But watch the adjustment that he's going to make. and come back to the ball. Pollard's going to overrun it, and that's great communication between the two. That's why Tim Day is so important to this offense. They can communicate without saying anything. I initially thought it was Piscatelli, but you're right. It was Pollard, the linebacker in coverage, who nearly knocked it down. And the decision-making by the Ducks. Anderson fakes, rolls, stops down at the 26-yard line. Right now, let's send it to our College Football Saturday studio for a Kia Sair game break with my man, Mike Goldberg. Mike? Billy Mack, we continue coverage of rivalry Saturday in Pullman, Washington. The Apple Cup, 3-0 Washington until freshman quarterback Alex Frank hits the tight end, the junior Troy Veneman. 7-3 Cougars hoping to claim the Apple Cup. Guys. Thank you, Mike. We'll check with uh, you often this afternoon. Chris Salomona, the senior defensive end. The sack credited with the sack for Oregon. Now the bees from the 26-yard line. Anderson, what a shot. Throw it again over the middle. Caught. 40-yard line and more to the 45. 
Mike Pass. Let's talk about him, John Jackson, the most unlikely looking athlete. If you saw him walking around campus, the former walk-on, he's got 72 catches coming into the game, and he's got one right there stopped by Justin Finnessy. The team's leading receiver, over 1,000 yards, 1,100 yards receiving this season. Leads the Pac-10 in receptions with 72 coming into today and yards. And it's amazing. His story is simply amazing how he has come onto this team as a walk-on, has made the team and become one of the best receivers that ever played the school. 17 yards, first down, 45. See if they can get the running game going with Wright. To the 49-yard line. Now, if you look at film of Oregon the last couple of weeks, you'd figure they've got some holes you can run against. Both Cal and UCLA ran for over 200 yards the last couple of weeks. But it's kind of a combination of things. Those are two of the best running teams in the Pac-10, and uh, they were certainly on their game that day. I talked to Paul Christ about that yesterday when I had a chance to visit and talk about the running game. And, you know, the, the past two weeks, you're right, Oregon has given up a ton of yards on the ground, but this is not a great running team. This is a passing team, but he said that they need to run the ball to keep this team off balance. UCLA ran it right up the gut with authority and with effectiveness without their number one running back, Maurice Drew. A game that put UCLA into a bowl game and kept Oregon still scratching and clawing, hoping to get a victory here. Remember, the winner gets a bowl game. If everything stays status quo, the Ducks would most likely go to the Insight Bowl and the Beavers, if they win, possibly headed to the Sun Bowl. Another off-tackle play. Dwight Wright. They were expecting him to sort of take over and become the next Ken Symington here at the school. Remember, Ken Symington, one of the best backs to ever play at OSU. Very exciting. Another smaller back, but a game-breaker nonetheless. You know, it's funny. They ran for 24 yards last year against Oregon to the Beavers. And remember, Steven Jackson was there. That number uh, a little misleading because six sacks were factored in. Still, they couldn't really get it going last year either with Jackson. Throw to the near side incomplete. Dan Haynes was the intended receiver, and Anderson obviously frustrated after he had his man open on third down. The departure of Steven Jackson, as you mentioned, a big factor in this offense. Imagine he was only a junior, left a year early from college to go to the NFL. If he was in this offense, wow, look out. This would have been an outstanding team, and probably a team that could have contended for you know first, second place in the Pac-10. Sam Polescu, boy, he's really been good. Was an All-American J.C. punter down at Fullerton. That's in Southern California. He is such a great positional kicker and shows it right there. It's not about the distance with Sam. It's about where he can place it. And this one is placed inside the 10 at the 6. Perfectly done. Minute 44 to go. First quarter. John Jackson, my guy's right there in the middle. Look at him. <laughs> Nothing on. I hope he's got the pants on. There he is right there. It's going to get down into the mid, maybe the low 30s tonight. We talked about it's cool, it's clear. That's the temperature, 44 degrees, when we kicked it off. It'll get down in the mid 30s. And I know John's got his Alaskan ski jacket on right now. Now next to him, here's Whitehead. Bounces off of a couple of tacklers, and he's down the sideline. Finally knocked out at the 30-yard line. Great second effort. Mitch Mewson, of course, a great safety. The senior from Forest Grove, Oregon, finally made the stop. Whitehead, significant yardage for the Ducks. The one common denominator with Terrence Whitehead is he always will break the first tackle. As you see, if you do not wrap him up, he is not going down. Whitehead, not a big back, 5'10", 210 pounds, but as Coach Brooks, as Coach Bilotti told us, he's a self-made back, a back that's developed himself in the weight room and also throughout practice with great habits on and off the field. Well, we saw Clemens be patient. That's what makes Whitehead good, too. He's a patient runner. Let's the block set up for him. Then he can kick it to the edge very quickly, like he did right there. Out of the eye, which now moves. Clemens still has the football. Rolls the pocket, throws over the middle. Intercepted! Beavers have it out of bounds! Sabby Piscatelli. That's his fifth interception of the year, and the Beavers are in business. And that ties him for the interception lead for Oregon State on the season, along with Mitch Mewson, the other safety. Piscatelli in great position, and that's a tough ball that Clemens was trying to force in there today. He was covered as he was on the last play on the touchdown pass, the same type of coverage, but this time it's a safety in coverage, and they have more athletic ability than those linebackers. 
steps inside, makes that interception, a big turn of events for Oregon State. Well, that's a tough throw across your body, his eighth interception of the year. He threw five and two home losses, upset losses. Here, of course, they're on the road, and now down seven to three with a minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Derek Anderson in Oregon State, play action. Steps into the pocket, falls down as he throws. Subsequently, throws it behind the intended receiver, Mike Hass, and completes. One thing the Beavers have been able to do so far in this game is protect Derek Anderson. There's been one sack, but there was still good protection on that sack. That ball just thrown behind half. Well, last week, Anderson uh, versus Stanford in their win over the Cardinal. Feast or famine. Second half looked a whole lot better. Looked like Elway at times, but right. other times didn't. Quite obviously, looked like you throwing the football. 7-3, <laughs> minute 24 to go, first quarter. Second and 10, although you can spin it pretty well. Anderson, not the mobilest of quarterbacks, but finds his man. Defender falls down, and Newton's got yardage close to the first down marker. This guy's got NFL caliber tools at six foot seven. Well, throughout the afternoon, we're going to take you down memory lane. 1962, the Civil War. Oregon State down 17 to six at the half, but Heisman Trophy winner Terry Baker brings them back. And in the end, Oregon State would win it 20 to 17. Just a great memory, the Civil War. In honor of the Heisman winner back in 1962 here at Reeser Stadium sold out for the 28th consecutive time. Third down and short. Right tries the middle. Close. You see where the spot is. Had to just get to the 20-yard line. Devin Long in there to make the stop. And it's going to be a first down. They'll move the chain for OSU. Power football. And when they need the short yardage, able to get it. But reflecting back to that 62 game, Oregon State was actually down 17 to 6 in that game. They had to come back from with a 14-point run to finish that game, to win that game 20 to 17. So that's how this game, these rivalry games have gone. It's not been the team necessarily that scored first or the team is leading late. There's been a lot of dramatic finishes, and we'll talk about them throughout the day. And Oregon State remained perfect in the red zone. They're going to go down with a sack at the 29. Ramon Reed came in there along with Devin Long, and Anderson hit the turf again. So the offensive line not protecting, and this is what happened last year as the game progressed. And it's the twist stunt by the linebacker Reed, able to come off of the edge untouched. A year ago, Oregon was able to apply pressure to Derek Anderson without blitzing. It was just four-man fronts, and they were able to get to Anderson. They were anticipating not getting the same blitzes this year, but there's a quick blitz by Reed, by Reed unaccounted for by Oregon State. Well, when we had our conversation with Nick Aliotti, the defensive coordinator, said Anderson has two quarterbacks, one when he has protection and one after he gets hit. And if they hit him often enough, they think they'll get him in the end zone. Touchdown! Mike Haas! One hit that time. Perfect throw. Beavers have the lead. Twenty-eight yards to junior Mike Hass. When Anderson has time to throw, which he does here, he's able to plant his feet, and you can see he is right on the money. Over the top of the safety, Justin Finnessy. Hask is behind the defenders, and Oregon State up on top. Perfect throw. Anderson electrifies the crowd. OSU back on top. 22nd touchdown pass of the year for Derek Anderson. Washington's got it. This will be the last play of the first quarter. And Washington trips up and he's down at the 20 yard line as time expires in the first 15 minute stanza. Kia Sarah's bringing you college football Saturday. The emotion of a rivalry game. Interstate in Oregon, Ducks and Beavers. It's 10 7, Oregon State. JJ and I back with quarter number two in a moment. Back in Corvallis, and the crazies are out in force, and we love it. You know, John, a local columnist today was bemoaning the fact that there's nothing to play for in this series. It, it's the longest series on the West Coast, and it's for bragging rights, but they don't have a trophy to pass the around. Hardware. So they don't need let's, hardware let's, in this game. Oh, come on. I'm going to get on the soapbox and say by next year when we come back, 
to Autzen Stadium for the Civil War. Have some hardware. Yeah, let's have some hardware to pass around. Well, let's go back to the definitive thing that we can talk about right now, and that's a great throw by Derek Anderson. This is a nice throw by Anderson, all set up by the underneath route by the receiver, allowed them to influence Justin Fennessey, the rover, the strong safety, and Haas gets behind him. Watch this ball by Anderson up over the top of Fennessey. This is a quarter's coverage that Oregon plays, and it's very, puts a lot of pressure on the safety. They have to know when to get back and when to come up and make plays. That time they were, take, they were able to take advantage of Tennessee's position and go over the top. And then three out of four with that interception in quarter number one will now throw on second and 10. Great protection, fires it over the middle and almost intercepted again. Right now, let's go back to the studio for another college football Saturday game break brought to you by Kia Sara with Mike Goldberg. Bill, four unbeatens in action today. Oklahoma, Auburn, Boise State. And number five, Utah at 10-0. Fourth and goal, Urban Meyer rolls the dice. Alex Smith, little option to Steve Savoy. But BYU is threatening. They are inside the 10. They could tie the game at 7. We will keep you posted. Thank you, Michael. Urban Meyer, one of the hot commodities across the country coaching-wise. How about the Utah team? Mm -hmm. Third down and 10 for Mike Bellotti's Oregon Ducks. Clemens. Here comes the pressure. Steps up and throws, gonna be short. What great coverage by the OSU secondary, a lot of it one-on-one, -on -one. the intended receiver, Kyle Weatherspoon, and somebody's gotta step up and have a game. Weatherspoon, Maxwell, Colvin to help out Demetrius Williams, who's gonna get a lot of coverage. Most importantly for Oregon State, they were able to keep Clemens in the pocket, keep him contained, not allow him to scramble out and make a play with his leg. Force him to stay in the pocket and make tough throws, that was a tough throw. Specialty teams for Oregon, much to the chagrin of Bellotti, struggled throughout most of the year for the Ducks. They've come on the last couple of weeks. This kick will not count. Flag down before he booted it away. He being Dittman. Five yards against Oregon. And once again, the Beavers stand to get great field position, leading 10-7 here in the second. Well, a year ago, this Oregon team really out physical Oregon State. They came out, hit them in the mouth. Offensive line and defensive line dominated the game a year ago. This tonight, a different story. Oregon State has stepped up to the challenge, and their offensive and defensive lines are playing extremely well at this point. Well, again, another great first quarter for Oregon State. They have outscored opponents in the first quarter this year coming in 77-34. We do the math. It's still in their favor, quite obviously. In fact, over the last five coming in, they had outscored the opponents 43-6. And that touchdown that Oregon scored, the first touchdown in the last six games scored in the first quarter against the Beavers. So they find themselves in a great spot. Strotter is the man back. Gets it at his own 48. Looking for room. Not finding much. Now he does after some hesitation. Strotter, great return to the 37-yard line. Shame, the freshman. They expect Sammy to be something special a year from now. Strader, a backup receiver at this point, but they expect him to be a game-breaker next year. College Football Saturday returns next week, beginning with a special edition on Friday as 20th-ranked Arizona State takes on Arizona in a showdown between in-state rivals. Then, on Saturday, the 23rd turn team in the country, Oklahoma State, looks to get past upset-minded Texas Tech. Now, it all begins at 3 in the East, noon Pacific, Friday and Saturday, only on FSN. Please check local listings for the games and start time in your area. First down, Derek Anderson. Back pedals. Going up on top. Bumping in the uh, secondary. Haas looking to draw a penalty flag. Not going to get it on the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Haas was covered there by Aaron Gibson. And Gibson did not start the game. He's normally the starting corner. He's been hurt a little bit with an ankle sprain. Ryan Gilliam started in his stead. Kiyosara presents College Football Saturday Coast to Coast here on FSN. I'm Bill McDonald along with John Jackson. It's the Civil War as they have coined it here over the years. Oregon and Oregon State winner goes to a bowl. Loser does not. They're, they're done for the year. Trying to set up a screen not there. Smelled out perfectly by Oregon's defense. Anderson will run. Don't see this often. He's pushed out of bounds and pushed with authority by Justin Finnessy. Six foot six, JJ. 240. He's really bulked up the last couple of years, but 
not a real scrambler. No, he's not a runner. He wants to be, prefers to throw the ball, throw the ball from the pocket. Great play recognition by the entire front of Oregon. They recognized that the screen was coming. The problem was every one of the defensive linemen flowed toward the screen and allowed Anderson to escape via the backside to pick up positive yards. Great play by the tackles. Robbie Valenzuela and uh, Haloti Nata. Just sifted out a little bit there. This uh, front four delivers a lot of pressure, enabling Oregon to go into some different coverages. It's just the front four bringing it this time, and the ball is loose. Devin Long was there to knock it free, and it's at the 36-yard line. Initial signal goes to Oregon State. And just as I talked about, when you can bring pressure just with the first four, it opens up so many other things defensively. And watch the athleticism on Nata. He goes to the outside. He goes right after the arm of Anderson. The officials rule that the, his arm was not going forward, but it's an outstanding play by Nata. Watch him swim move to the outside, and now the pressure right on Anderson goes for his arm. Very heads-up play defensively. It appeared to me that ball was going forward, but Oregon State very heads-up to get on the ball and save a, a, a turnover that would have given Oregon the ball. Quickly trying to get on for Alexis Serna. It's a fake. Throw. Caught at the 20-yard line. Fake all the way. Bill Swancott. The great defensive end, the receiver. Cole Charles made the throw. You think this is a rivalry game? You pull out all the tricks, a perfect time to pull a fake field goal. And right on the money to Swan Cut. He does it defensively, the all-time leading sack leader, and now a reception, his first of his career. Tennessee a bit tardy. First down, places rocking. Second quarter, just inside the 20. Anderson over the middle. Down to the five-yard line, Joe Newton again. Boy, he's been a favorite target early, hasn't he? J.D. Nelson, the son of Stanford great Darren Nelson, out of the safety position, second leading tackler on the team, makes the stop. And Billy, if you're Oregon, you're going to have to contain the two big play players that Anderson wants to get the ball to. And that's Newton and Haas. They have not defended them well. This time, man coverage, and Newton and Haas are going to defeat man coverage. They need to double up on these guys, force Anderson to go through a second and third progression. That's the point where he struggled this year when he has to go to, through two and three reads. Right now, he is on track looking for his primary receiver. Anderson up the middle, right. Not going to get much. Well, you Oregon fans know that the Ducks have had trouble defending the pass for the last few years, and this year's team, no exception. They've had some lapses in the secondary for Mike Bellotti and Nick Aliotti. A very young secondary. Gibson, Fennessey, both juniors. Nelson, a sophomore, and Jackie Bates, a freshman. Freshman. You always Delta worry Delta. about those young corners, don't you? Young in the secondary, and that's going to add up to some mistakes and some... Missed assignments. This will be a very good group a year from now, but right now they are facing one of the best quarterbacks to play in the Pac-10. Davis with 11 and a half to go in the second quarter on second down and goal. Anderson. Down he goes. At the eight-yard line. Haloti Nada. Let's talk about him. 345 and 65. Now that is a load to try and block. And he bench presses 455 pounds. And he just bench presses one of the offensive linemen for Oregon State right into the backfield. Watch the push from the middle. Just a great pressure by Nata. He is so big and strong. Two years ago, he was a starting defensive tackle. Missed last year, redshirted after a knee injury. But to have him back on this line makes up for the two big losses in the middle that they had from a year ago. Week 45. Here's Anderson again on third down. Throws it short. Caught, struggling, not going to get there. Marcel Love had it, was stretching. Didn't quite be, have the uh, elasticity to get in there. Jerry Madsen from the middle made the stop. Crowd wants six. Coach wants three. Coach wins out. <laughs> they are going to go for three. That's the right move at this point. Nice inside route by Love. The one thing I like early in this game is Derek Anderson is spreading the ball around to all of his receivers. 
That is so important in this offense to make sure that you go through your reads and believe in what you see. That is what he's doing right now. That's why he's having so much success. Cerna, now 12 out of his last 13 field goal attempts. And the one he missed was in a swirling wind at U of A, and it was from distance. 13-7, Beavers over the Ducks. Coast to Coast on FSN Live here from Corvallis. We welcome you back. Our Kia Sierra scoreboard shows 13-7, Beavers on top of the Ducks. Cerna will be kicking off for Oregon State. Our Dodge scoring drive, nine plays, 34 yards, but the Ducks hold inside the 10 and force a field goal by Cerna to bring us to our score, 13-7. Kenny Washington has trouble with it. Finally collects, but he's gonna go down just outside the 10-yard line, so. It costs him some significant yardage. JJ, our U.S. Bank Players of the Week in the Pac-10 Conference. Chris Marquis, the running back for UCLA, 131 yards. His first start against this Oregon Duck team. Wendell Hunter, of course, had a great game a week ago. Two interceptions, and Justin Medlock, two 50-plus yard field goals, again, against this Oregon Duck team, and a big victory for the Bruins. And in case you're just rolling in from your Saturday activities, Cal easily took care of Stanford, and solidified their spot in the top five. UCLA has three weeks off, two weeks from today, when they get cross-down rival USC. First down, 12-yard line. Clemens, Whitehead. Close to the 20-yard line. Terrence Whitehead, fourth all-purpose. Pac-10. You know, he runs with a little chip on his shoulder. He certainly has an attitude, doesn't he? He does, Billy, but he sets his blocks up extremely well. That last run, he was a designed to go off tackle, but had the presence of mind to bounce outside and pick up a big gain of seven. Ladies and gentlemen, the first down line is being brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Side, very close to a first down. Whitehead also an excellent receiver. We really haven't seen him come out of the back yet. He has 500 yard games in the last eight weeks. Does Terrence Whitehead? And when he was to look at him, when he was recruited by the University of Oregon, he was brought in as an athlete. Originally slotted to play the outside linebacker position has made that transition and that's probably one of the best moves that this coaching staff has made in recent memories to move him to that running back position he's been a starter for two years and they've had some great backs over the last few years we mentioned the simonton and jackson for oregon state well drones and morris are a couple of great names over the last few years in eugene ontario smith as well ontario smith let's not forget him he's in the league First down after they move the chains. They'll keep it on the ground and lose yardage. They play for the Beavers defensively. And what a woeful start for Oregon State. However, you've got to take into consideration the schedule, maybe the toughest in the country. But since that bye week that I alluded to, they are 4-1 and, and only losing to USC in the fog right here at Reeser Stadium, a game that they certainly had a chance to win in the second half. It was murderer's row to start the season. LSU, Boise State, Arizona State, and Cal. That adds up to a 1-4 record, and they have been able to rebound since that point and played extremely well. Brutal, some night games on the road, a short week against Boise State, and they should have beaten LSU. Clemens. Proud, doing a good job, not giving him any room to run when he wants to. Trent Bray again. Bray's got football in his blood. His dad is currently coaching at the University of Colorado. He was formerly on the staff here at Oregon State. He was a defensive coordinator for this staff, and so you can understand why Trent Bray has great presence of mind defensively. He's a quarterback of this defensive team at that middle linebacker spot, and he always seems to be in position to make plays that no exception he's a junior from pullman so wazoo let him get away third down and long third and 12 clemens hit as he throws intercepted mitch Musin 
He's got his six, which leads the conference, and his 20th in his illustrious OSU career. It's an Oregon State record. The career interception leader at the university, and watch Musin anticipate the passing lane and jump right in front. The play is made by pressure, though, right in the face of Clemens. You see the hit that he took right before he released that ball. But Musin, great anticipation. As a defensive back, you know there's only so much time the quarterback's going to have to get rid of that ball. That allows that clock in your head to tick, and you can jump routes just like Musin did right there. Well, Bill Swan cut all over the field. Remember, he caught the fake field goal for a first down. That time, applying pressure on Clemens. Second interception by Kellen this afternoon. Anderson. Over the middle, Pops. He's got a great burst of speed to the 10-yard line. Not flat-out speed, but once he gets the football, that initial run after Pops normally nets him five, six, seven yards. Jerry Matson finally brings him down for the Ducks, but the Beavers are looking good here in quarter number two. In talking to Delvon Alexander, the receiver coach, he says, you know, with Mike Cass, he's a little bit faster than people think. He's a little bit stronger than people think. He's a little bit better than people think, and that's why he continues to make plays and is seemingly unstoppable this year as he leads the conference in reception. He was the player of the week in the conference back on September 11th, and that, no, uh, earning that accolade. First down and goal. Anderson, caught again, close, touchdown! Marcel Love, Beaver. Love's fourth touchdown on the season, another inside dig route. The one thing with Oregon, their defensive backs, they like to play that quarter's coverage, which means the cornerback's going to be on the outside shoulder of the receivers. Right now, OSU taking advantage with inside dig route. That one for a touchdown. And it's not like it's a surprise. Everybody here, everybody everywhere knew that Oregon State was going to come out and throw the football, and they've done it successfully so far against the Ducks. Marcel Love, the touchdown catch. 6.50 to go first half. Ducks are down 20 to 7. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless Phones. All the features, none of the hassles. And brought to you in part by Cooper Tires, proud sponsor of College Football. By Rocky, legendary outdoor gear since 1932. And the first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to 70% every day. It's all about the O. Well, the Ducks won last year in a chilly Eugene, now in a chilly Corvallis. The home team, who has won the last seven in this series, on top. 20 to seven, Derek Anderson has been right on the money. This kickoff is back to the 28 yard line. Well, once again, let's take you back. 1983, they call it the toilet bowl around these parts. Considered one of the worst games ever played by the folks involved. 11 turnovers, four missed field goals, Things weren't going right, was it, John Jeff? Oh, it features two of the worst uniforms ever to play on the same field at the same time. Look at those uniforms. I am so glad that both teams have made the change to the new uniforms. They look so much better. You can't play well if you don't have good uniforms on, Billy. That's a simple fact. Even I know that. Well, both teams look good and playing well right now. Oregon wishes they were stepping things up. Clemens trying to do just that. Throws it short. Going to be a game of about two, maybe three yards. Demetrius Williams. One of the great deep threats, but obviously just giving it underneath. One Keith thing, Ellison, a very nice surprise, uh, made the stop. A uh, good surprise at linebacker this year made the stop. One thing the Ducks have to be careful of is not to turn this into a one-dimensional game where they're trying to throw the ball a lot. Remember, this is a team that runs to set up the pass first. They run with Whitehead. They run with Clemens. They need to keep that in mind and make sure they stay balanced with that offense. They've had a problem with the vertical passing game, Oregon, trying to get it on track. Second down, let's see if Clemens does go up on top here. Wanted to, flagged down in the secondary. He's gonna go long, once again looking for Williams. He might have been held initially. That's uh, the vicinity of where the flag was around midfield. Initial guess, this could go against the Beavers. Demetrius Williams, 6'2", 185 pound junior. A reminder that tomorrow a full day of football begins 
with America's number one pregame show. We'll tell you about that in a second. As I was saying, go ahead and finish, please. Howie names his top 10 defensive players in the league, plus Falcons coach Jim Moore. Those 10 yards of TV. Fox NFL Sunday returns this week at noon in the East 9 here in the Pacific, only on Fox. Watch it. That's basically the message there. Gotcha. The NFL. Mike Bellotti, sans the mustache this year. You like it? I do like him better without the mustache. So he looks a little bit more dignified. I think he says he looks a little younger. And that's all that really matters. If Mike thinks he's looking young and dashing, <laughs> I'm with him. He's going to stay with him. One of the great coaches. In fact, more tenure than anyone right now in the Pac-10. He's built just a tremendous national program in Eugene. Clemens over the middle again, but the Beavers giving him underneath stuff. That time to Terrence Whitehead. We talked about what a great receiver he is. In fact, he's one of only two players in the nation, Jerry Seymour of Central Michigan being the other, that has at least 1,000 yards and 300 yards receiving. They want to get the ball into his hands as often as possible today. The more times that Terrence Whitehead touches the ball, the better off for this Oregon offense. Very difficult to defend. You have to make sure you account for where he is at. And if you can force defense to make adjustments, that opens up that passing game for Williams and Dick. Ducks hoping to break their two-game losing streak. Losing that heartbreak of the Cal. And last week at home, the UCLA 34-26. Whitehead. Well, he hit the hole hard that time. And very close to a first down. That's exactly what you want from a running back. See daylight, hit daylight. That's what this Oregon offense does. They have four guys returning from that offensive line. You take a look at the numbers that for Whitehead in the five wins, 123 yards rushing. Five losses, only 86. But the touchdowns are the big thing. Seven touchdowns in the wins versus one in the losses. This offensive line, they returned four out of five guys from a year ago. So this is a veteran group. They will not panic in this situation down by 13. Take third down for the Ducks. Third and short. Single setback. They're going to run the option. First time we've seen it. And Clemens has the first down. It gets driven back on his shoulder. Mitch Musin came in there. But uh, Clemens picks up the first down and quiets the crowd here. There's a small pack of Duck supporters down to our right with their band as the fight's on. Starts up. A lot of people might wonder why, when you have a quarterback like Clemens and his capability, do you run the option? The answer is simple. What it does is it forces the defense to balance up. If you have a quarterback that can run the option either way, it forces the defense to play assignment football and balance up and eliminate some of the stunts and twists. That's one of the reasons they're able to get pressure on Clemens in this first half. For the defense, it's all discipline defensively. Just worry about what's between the tackles. Don't look at all the other fancy stuff. Clemens trying to keep this drive going and does to the near side and again it's Williams he's going to see the football a lot I suspect before this afternoon is over he beats Brandon Browner the 6-4 corner who had all the accolades last year JJ all league things just haven't gone his way as much this year have they the Pac-10 freshman of the year a year ago was Brandon Browner with six interceptions really stormed on the scene but you know, talking to Coach Baker, he said, well, one of the things that was a factor is that teams tried to pick on him. And so in as a result, when they threw bad balls, he was in position to make those plays. This year, they haven't picked on him as much. They've been able to balance it up, make things a little bit more difficult. But they think he's going to be phenomenal by the time he leaves the school, as long as he gets his work ethic up. Clemens, all sorts of time. Incomplete. Receiver might have been held up. Tim Day he might have grabbed the laundry a bit. Piscatelli there a little bit early in trying to defend Tim Day. That was going to be a very difficult throw for Clemens. Holding defensively. March it off against Oregon State. Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator. Prior to the Oregon. pass being thrown, holding on the defense, number 24. Ten-yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first yeah, we down. talked about Great running backs, great quarterbacks, these two schools. How about great coaches? We're talking about a tough act to follow when Jeff Tedford left. That's a huge shadow that he cast. He had one of the most explosive offenses in the country. Now, working magic at Cal. And uh, Ludwig, for the most part, has done the job, but obviously has had some detractors when they look at what Tedford has done. I think Tedford is one of the best offensive minds in the entire Pac-10. One of the main reasons why Cal is playing so well. Whitehead 
Gets outside, looking for the cone. Driving and out of bounds inside the five. Finally, Bill Swancutt was there. Second, third effort that time by Terrence Whitehead. It'll be first down and goal for the Oregon Ducks. He runs extremely hard. He averages 5.7 yards every time he touches the ball rushing. And the reason why is because he's able to break tackles. Dead to rights right there, able to break that tackle, get inside the five-yard line. That's what makes Terrence Whitehead so special. Watch him. They have him right here. Tackle, wrap up. Easier said than done. Whitehead, that 210-pound small frame, extremely strong. Ducks in great shape. Everybody in the box. Second man through, Whitehead again. Wrapped up behind. There's that second effort looking for a third. Pile driven and back to the four-yard line. We'll see where forward progress is given. Eric Williams, Keith Ellison, Trent Bray, and others in there for the Beaver defense. Offensive line of Snyder, Stites, Kniebel, Lucas, De La Grange. They're going to rely on them here. It's second and goal, but I expect three running plays from the Oregon Ducks. They're going to try to pound it right down their throat. This is a very physical offensive line. They want to establish that here. One that is underachieved. It would be great for them if they came up big in the biggest game of the year. They run option. Clemens keeps it, and he's short. Last time they ran right, this time they go the opposite way. Chaz Scott and Ellison, the outside linebackers, combine again, and there's a flag down. Option once again. The key is to read the defensive end. They did a nice job of staying parallel to the line of scrimmage and forcing Clemens to stay parallel. Holy. On the offense, number 74, 10-yard penalty, previous spot, still second it's out. It's Stites, number 74, the one detected withholding now this will drive them back but give them a little more room and expect clemens now to go to the air but a huge penalty because now you take it yourself out of one take yourself out of four down territory right from the one yard line there's no question i think that two running plays would definitely be coming from the ducks now you got a second couple down of passing from the 12 plays. you got a couple passing plays in front of you defense asks for some noise the fifth best offense in total efficiency in the Pac-10. Brings it up second down from the Beaver 12. Williams in motion. Clemens sets, fires. Got a man, touchdown. Demetrius Williams and the Ducks have come back. We talked about the shifts in the, mo in the motion from Oregon. It's set up to confuse the defense, and that time they lost track of Williams. He's a motion man to the left of your screen. He's going to come across the field under all of the defense for Oregon State. And with Clemens has time, he allows him to uncover, and he's wide open. For all that Demetrius Williams has done, and he's been bothered with that toe the entire year, he completes an eight-play, 72-yard drive with that score. That's just his second touchdown catch. The 6'2 junior. The big play guy, the go-to guy. That's his second touchdown reception Incredible. of the year. Kellen Clemens and the Oregon Ducks. As the half is winding down. They're back to within six. Coming up on the Seattle's Halftime Report, I'll be joined by the Hall of Famers, Kellen Winslow and Billy Ray Smith. Rivalry Saturday, the Iron Bowl, the big game. Ohio State, Michigan, even a little Oklahoma at Baylor. We've got it all covered coast to rebellious coast. Coming up on the Seattle's Halftime Report. Back to Corvallis, Billy McDonald, John Jackson, guys. All right, Mike. Uh, looking forward to hearing Billy Ray and Kellen mix it up like they do at the half. The best part is when they mix it up. When they don't agree, that's the best part of the show. Oh, you know they never do. <laughs> I know. That's, that's why it's <laughs> such a good show. Siegel will boot it away. Lamar Heron. Here he comes across the 20 to 25. Remember I mentioned before that only one kick was returned for a touchdown this entire year in the Pac-10. Stanford did it. Figured a couple might be broken. There's the touchdown maker, Demetrius Williams, and now it's back for Anderson, who's had himself a solid first half. Last year versus the Ducks, threw for 271 yards. He's passed Cade McNown, by the way, yardage, career touchdowns. 
Not going to catch Andrew Walter, though. We were there when Walter passed Elway a couple of weeks ago. He had five the touchdowns last week. 85 is where Andrew stands now. Right, right. Trying to get some yardage. This running game who hasn't gone much. When you, look at, much. when you look at the quarterbacks around the Pac-10, I mean, we have two of the best here, Anderson and Clemens. You talked about Arizona State and Andrew Walter, how well he has played 85 touchdowns for his career. Edwards from Stanford, Rogers from Cal, and Matt Leinert from USC. So the Pac-10 has no question the best quarterbacks of any conference in the country. And we get a chance to look at two of them tonight. But it's been that way. Every week, you got one of the best quarterbacks in the nation squaring off. Second down and nine. Anderson forced to run to the near side and throw. And it's caught by Wright, the shifty runner. That's his 18th catch of the year. Gibson made the stop. You know, we're talking about the talented quarterbacks around the Pac-10. Well, we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a second, JJ. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. 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 Third down and four. Ducks will have some time if they can stop them here. Flag is down. No play. And we'll wait for the call. What I was going to talk about, you're talking about the talented quarterbacks and the perception of the Pac-10. You know, you look at preseason publications and everybody says the SEC is the number one conference and that's why there's such a, uh, an argument about who should Fire maybe go out. to the championship Full game. Right tackle. But I think Five as this year has progressed, third down. Please I think the you're seeing one minute, 41 seconds. Please. the Pac-10, I think, is a better conference than the SEC this year. No question about it. When you have good quarterbacks and across the, the conference, that's going to equal good matchups because any quarterback can get hot and beat the opposition on any given also, Saturday. Let me give you a number. The Pac-10 out of conference is winning at a 621 clip. And they've got two games left, SC Notre Dame and Cal Southern Miss in that hurricane delayed game. Right. A couple of games that the Pac-10 stands to win. So they've done very well out of conference. Anderson wanted to go screen again. Oregon was there. He runs again. Close to a first down. Dancing along the near side. Boy, right on the marker. They may have to bring it across the field. It's that close on that third down scramble. Well, watch the recognition by the defensive line of Oregon. They're going to recognize the screen. It's going to be a screen set up to the left side. The entire defensive front recognizes that, but nobody puts pressure on Derek Anderson. Once again, allowing them to escape out of the backside and pick up a big gain. This time very close to the first down sticks. You see that marker right down on the edge. Anderson needs to go for that. There's a marker on the sidelines. Now he sees it. It's in his sights. He needs to get across that. He appears to go out a little bit early, not wanting to take that hit. But that's one thing as a quarterback. You have to dive forward for that first down marker. Make sure your team gets the first down. Well, it's a first down. Coming up at half, we'll have the Cialis Halftime Report. The trio will be in the studio. There they are, Mike Kellen and Billy Ray. Scores and highlights from this big Saturday as we're winding down and we're thinking bowl season. Rivalry Saturday around the country. And, of course, because of national television, all the networks, uh, some big games have been spread out over the next two, right. three weeks. So you football fans won't go hungry for big games. Even into the first week of December. Across the middle, caught by Haas. Only top 10 receiver averaging over 100 yards per game. He's fourth in the nation with 112 yards of contest. And the one thing that Mike Riley and Oregon State continue to do is take advantage of the outside leverage of the cornerback from Oregon. A lot of inside routes here in the first half. There's a lot of space in the middle, and Anderson has been on target with those inside throws. This team is average. 28 points a game, the last five to bring their season average to 23 points per. I'm talking about the Beavers. Again, they throw. That's a tough throw. Pretty good coverage. Wasn't bad coverage. Just a better throw and catch by Mike Haas. And right now, Oregon State just one step ahead of the Ducks. That time, man coverage inside leverage from Gibson. So what do they do? They make the adjustment and run the out route to the sideline. 
not only a positive gain, but also stops the clock. So a very good two-minute drive here being put on by Oregon State. Fourth best overall defense. Back on their heels a bit. Minute nine remaining. First half. We're live from Corvallis. It's the Civil War. Oregon State on top, 2014. Anderson hit as he throws. Down the middle, caught! 13-yard line. George Gillette out of Manual Arts High School in Los Angeles. And a senior who hasn't seen a whole lot of playing time. This is his season. Picking on Ryan Gilliam this time, the freshman. Anderson steps up into the pocket. A strike right down the seam. And Gillette, the senior, in his last game here at Reeser Stadium, another big catch. And again, the reason why he's playing, Anthony Wheat Brown suspended after that incident on November the 12th. Off campus here in Corvallis. First down. Throw is low again, and again it's caught. Boy, Hass did the sliding job, and the ball was right there. 40 seconds left, Anderson is pumped, and Anderson is on target. He's both of those. He is feeling it right now. He's spreading the ball around. You can see the confidence. Watch his legs. Just steps up and delivers a strike nice and low, not to get his receiver's head knocked off. Very good throw. Very good intentional low throw by Anderson. It'll be Ryan Gilliam. It has to the football. And now timeout as we get set for a first and goal at the one yard line which is 32 seconds remaining has now 100 yards receiving on the afternoon six catches for 100 yards sunday november the 28th acc sunday night hoops returns to fsn when the trojans of usc look to upset the fourth ranked north carolina tar heels that's gonna be a tough one for henry bibby coverage begins with our tip-off show at seven o'clock in the east four o'clock pacific only on fsn Oh, Trojan's not one of the favorites in the Pac-10. That belongs to Arizona and Lute Olsen. Year after year. Not, not a whole lot changes in that department. How about the career of Derek Anderson? We talked about all the things that he has done. But, you know, there was a lot of pressure on him when he took over the starting job here at Oregon State, taking over Jonathan Smith, who, of course, led great Oregon State teams. They're probably a team, in my opinion, that was the best team back in his day. They should have won a national championship. And so he steps into this role, taking over for Jonathan Smith. Not the same weapons that Smith had, but the same expectation. They expect him to do a lot of great things. He has done that. He's thrown for a lot of yards, thrown for a lot of touchdowns. He's also thrown for a lot of interceptions. And that's because he's learning a new system. Mike Riley thinks he's finally starting to get it. It's a shame that he's a senior graduate. Yeah, expectation levels have uh, risen for everybody here at Oregon State the last six, seven years. Out of Stephens High School, quarterback, flags are down. Anderson, 15 for 20, couple of touchdowns, 205 yards. Offside on the defense. So we'll move it half the distance. Let's move it. The offense, the full start. About a foot and a half. The fourth, half the distance to the goal, first down. And there it is, the half yard line. First down. The tailback is right. The quarterback is Anderson. Does he keep? Does he give? He keeps. He dies. He scores. Touchdown. Beaver. And he lost the shoe of the process. <laughs> Quick quarterback sneak. Anderson, 6'6", 240 pounds, stretches out his frame, and once the ball crosses the plane of the goal line, that is an easy touchdown for Anderson. In under two minutes, eight plays, 72 yards, and he throws a shoe. Yeah, you see him trying to stay off of that sock. Doesn't want to get it wet with the turf. 27-14, Cerna connects, 31 seconds remaining, first half. A lot of love in the house right now for the home team as they're on top 27-14, 108th renewal of the Civil War. Oregon State looking to win for the 44th time in this series. Bust 
Busted it out. Washington. Kenny Washington, some significant yardage. And gives Oregon an opportunity with 23 seconds remaining in the half. Hey, high school fans, uh, you can now track some of the best preps in the country. Just log on to wendyshighschoolheisman.com to get a look today at some of the future stars of tomorrow. It's brought to you by Wendy's. Well, this uh, may change the mindset for Ludwig, Bellotti, and company. Now with some good field position, they're thinking at least a field goal. 23 seconds remaining. They've got all three timeouts to spend. Clemens hit again, throws it out of bounds. So good pressure being applied by the Beavers. Trent Bray that time came in, and Clemens slow to get up. If he were to go down, we'd probably see the freshman, Dennis Dixon. And this has been the flip side of a year ago. This year, Oregon State able to apply pressure. That time it comes from the middle. That's Trent Bray, the middle linebacker on the blitz. They're able to apply pressure on the quarterback, and they've thrown the rhythm of Kellen Clemens off in this first half. Second down and 10. You should be thinking Demetrius Williams. Dante Rosario is also in at the H position. Clemens steps up, throws, far side, complete. That's the number one, Garen Strong, his second catch of the afternoon evening. He's a freshman, part of a great recruiting class of the last year or so. Timeout called, 12 seconds remaining here in the first half. And remember, Oregon's kicker is a good one in senior Jared Siegel. Let's go back to 1994. Danny O'Neill will connect with Dino Filia right there. In fact, they connected for both Oregon touchdowns. Now, Beaver's prayers were not answered late. As time expires, Oregon goes to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 37 years. That was the Rich Brooks era, of course, in Eugene. 1994, the Civil War. That team finished 9-3. and three. Here's a look at Siegel. Three weeks ago, was the Pac-10 Special Teams Player of the Week. He's 9 out of 14. This year, kicking field goals. And also the school scoring leader, scoring 309 points prior to tonight. And he had some problems early, but now has the confidence for Coach Pilotti. They still have two timeouts to spend 12 seconds remaining. A couple of quick plays. To be in the, I think, uh, relative distance. They got to get down to around uh, in between the 30 and the 35. Siegel's long this year is 51. From the 44, Clemens taking an awful lot of time. Down he goes. Six seconds, five seconds, four seconds, and the clock stops. Jeff Van Orso. The freshman from Las Vegas, and he's seeing more time because Joe Rudolph was part of that suspension back on the 12th of November. Well, if there's any knock on Clemens this year is that he holds the ball too long. You can see the pocket is fine. He had plenty of time to throw, but that clock has to go off in his head and tell him to get rid of that ball. There was plenty of time to release that ball. Even if it's incomplete, you bring your team up in still good position to get a first down and possibly into field goal position. Just another sack, again, given up by the offensive line. Our Aflac trivia question. This is the 108th meeting. We've talked about that often between Oregon and Oregon State. But do you know the two Division I-A rivals that have met the most? You know your college football trivia? This should be a layup for you. We're getting close to basketball time. But there you go. It's our athletic trivia question. We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Second and 18, just four seconds remaining. You're not going to have enough time for a completion uh, and either a timeout or out of bounds, so you've got to go end zone here on the Hail Mary. Final play of the half, barring a defensive penalty for Clemens and Oregon. Clemens moves around, lets it fly towards the goal line. Not intercepted, knocked down by Brandon Browner. And that'll end the half much to the roar and the approval of the home folks. First half, 27-14, Oregon State on top. Now let's take you to the College Football Saturday studio for the Seattle's Halftime Report. Mike Goldberg, Kellen Winslow, and Billy Ray Smith. 
Ah, the Civil War. First half entertaining, to say the least. Welcome into our studios. This is the Cialis Halftime Report. These are the Hall of Famers. You know them well. That is Kellen Winslow, Billy Ray Smith. I'm Mike Goldberg. Let's go right around the Pac-10. We start in Berkeley. 107th playing of the big game. Freshman running back Marshawn Lynch with a big gainer here. Watch the cut back. Now, see the guy coming up on the screen there? Right there. That's Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback. Coming out, getting in front of the play, and then what the enough backs don't do is make a cut back for the touchdown. Great JJ run, Marshawn. Aaron's a record-setting day along with Jeff MacArthur. The Apple Cup, Washington at Washington State. The good and the bad for junior quarterback Casey Paws. This is the good. Second effort to do it. To the junior tight end Joe Toledo. And this is the bad. This would be Paws. Oh. The ball's not loose. And Will Dirting, the big play linebacker from Washington State. Touchdown, Cougars. And it's a good one, 21 to 10. We'll keep you posted. Coming up next on the Seattle Halftime Report, number two, Oklahoma, number two, Auburn, challenged in Tuscaloosa. But at the end of the day, who's become the closest to contend with number one, USC? We discuss next on the Seattle Halftime Report. Welcome back to the Seattle Halftime Report. Kellen Clemens early to Tim Day. Three yards for the touchdown. Gave Oregon the early 7-3 lead. Oregon State leads at the break 27-14. In the Big 12 here on FSN, number two Oklahoma at Baylor. Senior quarterback Jason White. Maybe the best first half that Oregon State has played all season long. No question about it. It's because Derek Anderson has been outstanding. He's been on target. He has not turned the ball over. Conversely, Oregon, they have. Clemens has thrown two interceptions. That's the difference so far in this game. It's getting colder. I can see your It friend. is getting cold. Let's get to the first half stats. Take us inside the numbers, JJ. Well, when you look inside the numbers, it's really simple. The interceptions have been key for Oregon. Two of them on the night so far for Clemens. We talked about Anderson, 222 yards passing, 241 yards total offense for Oregon State. That's the reason they have the advantage in the first half. That has been their best half so far this year. One more half like that and they will go to a bowl game and be bowl eligible with six wins that's exactly right if you're uh, in the oregon area you know exactly what is at stake if you're just joining us these two teams came in both with five and five overall records four and three in the conference and the winner will go to a bowl game now a lot is to be determined of course but oregon likely would go to the inside bowl and if oregon state becomes eligible they have a chance to go to the sun bowl Lamar Heron will bring the second half kickoff back just past the 25-yard line. In fact, Oregon State last year, they were the Las Vegas Bowl champs, and it was Oregon who went to the Sun Bowl last year, and they were defeated by the Gophers of Minnesota. One thing, if you are the Ducks, you cannot abandon what you do best, which is run Terrence Whitehead. They need to continue to get him yards on the ground. He needs at least 15 touches here in the second half. Encroachment. On the kicking team, number 15, five-yard penalty, re-kick. And we'll pretend as if it never happened. Just change the yardage a little bit, and we'll re-kick. Starting the second half. Oregon State in the first half, and when they were obviously in the zone, they were able to get something accomplished. Just that one punt, other than that, Something was accomplished. A great first half for the Beavers as you see those three touchdowns. And, you know, Derek Anderson, what else can you say about him? When he is on target and going through his progression, through his reads, he's, he's virtually unstoppable. And that's what this offense is. It's a matter of the quarterback being able to read. They have three receivers in the pattern at all times. Mike Riley has developed this offense. He says, that, you know, Derek Anderson just starting to get it, just starting to understand it in his second year with Coach Riley. You can see no three and outs for the Oregon defense at all in half number one. So their defense on the field for uh, some time. Oregon needs to win to secure their 11th consecutive winning season. That would be the most ever in school history. Only USC, Washington, and Stanford can make that claim. 11 straight winning season. Here's Heron. Let's start the second half again. This time more yardage. And he gets out. And then brought back inside the 30-yard line. You talk about winning seasons. I think equally as impressive is Coach Gladi has never had a losing season 
in his 10 years here at the University of Oregon. All of that on the line as well here in the second half. Look at Anderson's numbers, over 200 yards passing, two and the touchdowns. And the most important thing, no interceptions. Uh, through 24 last year, through 16 coming into the game this year. That has been his problem, the decision-making, letting it fly when he shouldn't have. He took sacks when he, when he should have, actually. Didn't force the football at all. He's got it now, and he'll run again. Little pump fake and run it out of bounds. Ooh, that time delivered a bit of a hit. First time we saw him look for and initiate contact. Aaron Gibson was the one who came up from his corner position to lay the load on the quarterback, number 14. And boy, he dished it out, and down he goes. So trying to get a little rough instead of going out of bounds, and this is going to be catch your breath time for Oregon State. Exactly, a little slow getting up. Takes a huge hit. That's Gibson, the cornerback that came up to deliver the blow. They cannot afford to lose him. This could be the game for Oregon State. Still a whole half to go, and will they have to go to their backup quarterback up by 13 points? Hope to have that answer for you in a minute. Derek Anderson took that hit right in the back, and Ryan Gunderson, a 6'4 freshman, will be in at least for this snap. There he is, number 10, out of the Portland area. On second down, most likely he would give it up to right in the backfield, and he does. Oregon was suspecting it, but right picks it to the outside, gets the first down and more. You have to figure that was coming with the backup quarterback in. They still couldn't stop it as he went to the outside for significant yardage. Let's go back to the injury, John Jackson. Well, one thing as a quarterback, and especially not a running quarterback, Derek Anderson has to get down to avoid hits like this. This is an awkward hit by Gibson. He's going to hit him right in the back. Shook him up a little bit, but I think he'll be okay as he re-enters the game. Yeah, so uh, one play out, and he's right back in. And both these quarterbacks have taken a number of hits. Anderson and Clemens, both elite quarterbacks when they came out of high school from the state of Oregon. Play fake over the middle. Skip that one right at the feet of the intended receiver, George Gillette. One thing the Ducks wanted to get accomplished in this game is to get pressure on Anderson and make him take some type of a big shot. In the past, when he's been pressured, when he's taken extra shots from the defensive line, defensive ends, he has been rattled a little bit, and that's when he's thrown it to the other team. They have not been able to get that kind of pressure on him tonight. He's done a nice job, as you mentioned, distributing the ball and even going down when he's in a sack situation. So Oregon, they need to get pressure on him. They need to get a big hit on him to sort of shake him up and ruin his rhythm. Right there, that stopped a streak of eight straight completions. Now, chase them down from behind. So again, the defense, the pressure, that's what they need to get, as you mentioned, and Anthony Trucks, who Really is a great quarterback chaser. That's his six and a half sack this year. Trucks come from the top of the screen from his outside linebacker spot, one on one with coach the left tackle, and that's a mismatch because Trucks is very quick. As you mentioned, he has five and a half sacks coming into the night. That was his six and a half sack on the season. So Oregon abandoning the opening game game plan, which was to rush four and see if they can get to Anderson. They recognize they need to get pressure on him, expect more linebacker blitz. Third down and 18. Right here, let's see if Oregon can finally get something going defensively and get the football here early in the third quarter. Long throw, double team pick. Brought back inside the territory. J.D. Nelson down to the 15. J.D. Nelson moving over from his safety position, read it perfectly, that ball hung up, and Nelson has the Ducks in business here in the third quarter early. Anticipation by Nelson, you see him dropping back on the hash mark, reading Anderson's eyes all the way. The one thing that gets Derek Anderson in trouble is when he forces the ball into coverage. That was definitely forced into coverage, and great anticipation by Nelson, the sophomore, to come across for his first interception of the season. 17th pick thrown by Anderson. And here comes Kellen Clements, the junior quarterback. First turnover for Oregon State. Clements, quarterback draw, nowhere. Maybe the line of scrimmage. Once again, the middle of the defense, led by Trent Bray and Alvin Smith. We're there. We're not fooled at all. Smith has been very active. He's 6'2", 313. He's out of East Point, Georgia. 
and all of 313. Mm -hmm. Big series of downs. The Ducks need to take advantage of the momentum provided by that interception. Who's going to step up in the skill position to help out the quarterback? He doesn't have the weapons that he's had in years past. So, in other words, give it to Whitehead in the backfield. Terrence Whitehead goes left, gets a couple. Brandon Browner, good run support, and Bray again from the middle combined to make the stop on the junior. 5'10 junior, but really well built. This is a big play right here, Billy Mack. What do you do? You have to throw the ball. You put the ball in Clemens' hands. I think in this situation, though, you have to find a playmaker when you look to Oregon and look for playmakers. It's Day and Tim Demetrius Day. Williams. Look Gotta for those Tim two Day. in this situation. Williams is here. Third and five. Out of shotgun, Clemens, fade pattern, not gonna be there. Was he held up, flag down, it was a bit tardy, but Garen Strong was held up, and the flag is down on the fade. An aggressive release by Strong, knocked Brandon Browner off balance, and so Browner had no choice but to hold it. Well, that's a battle of two tall guys, 6'4", six, 6'3", six, the corner's a little bit taller than the receiver. The pass being thrown, holding on the defense, two. Penalties and four Brandon out of Silmar, Southern Automatic California. Pilate, Ludwig, they got new downs. As you can see, Strong being held up by Browner. But in defense of Browner, that's a good play. He was beat off of the line by Strong. And so his best option was to hold him because that would have been a give-me touchdown. Now at least his first and goal, but you force Oregon to earn a touchdown as opposed to giving one away because Browner was deep. Right, pretty good rushing team, obviously. Fourth in the conference. They're in the red zone. Last year they ran for over 200 against this team. Let's see if they can punch one in here. Option. Clemens keeps. Cuts it inside. Just doesn't look comfortable. It's a very slowly develop, slow developing option play this afternoon with Clemens and Whitehead. Chaz Scott and Sir Henry Anderson are both there to bring them down. The key to running the option for the quarterback, though, is to attack the line of scrimmage. If you stay parallel and deep in the backfield, the defense is going to level you out and it's going to allow the pursuit to get there and stop you for short game. As an option quarterback, Clemens needs to attack the line of scrimmage, come downhill a little bit more, force the deep defense to commit. And they attack the short side of the field, too. Now from the left half, the quarterback draw it again. Clemens calls his own number twice, and he's down at the one. Remember, they were in a similar situation earlier before getting set back by a penalty. And you would think maybe four down territory even this early. It's going to be at the one-yard line. Big down here. Morgan down by 13. The quarterback runs by design, but I would prefer for them to, if they're going to run the quarterback, to use Whitehead as that decoy. Maybe fake the power one way, come back with the quarterback the opposite side. Right now, there's no deception in the offense. That's what they're going to need to fool the defense from Morgan State. 36,000-plus making a lot of noise. Out of the eye formation, Clemens will throw. Touchdown! Tim Day. That's his second of the afternoon. And you can see when he's not in the lineup, what they're missing. Eight touchdowns on the season for Day. He's the leading touchdown reception maker on this Oregon squad. With the threat of the power, they get the ball close to the goal line, allows Day to free release. And it's sort of difficult. You have you put a guy over Day, but you have to be able to read whether it's run or pass. He did a nice job of selling the run before releasing it to his you route. Know, earlier, you were talking about quarterbacks in the Pac-10. There are a lot of great tight ends in this conference. I mean, we're seeing two good ones here today. Down at SC, Arizona State, Stanford, uh, Mercedes Lewis at UCLA. I mean, this, this league is stacked with talented receiving tight ends. We'll talk about that more when we come we back. Should. You're exactly right. Take a break, but the tight end for the Oregon Ducks has it here, and it's a six-point football game. College football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless Phones. All the features, none of the hassles. And brought to you in part by Best Buy. 
thousands of possibilities, get yours. By Docker, shirts and pants that do it all. And the first downline is being brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. It's all about the Civil War, too. The Kyocera scoreboard, 27-21. I'm Bill McDonald. John Jackson, alongside our great crew here in Corvallis. We thank them all for their work. Here's Lamar Heron. Takes it around the 10. Heron, the freshman, moves across the 30 to the 34-yard line. Good return for Oregon State. Now, let's see if they can come back with a drive like they did in half number one after Oregon came back and scored, but one more once, J.J., the touchdown. Well, you're going to see Day down here at the bottom of your screen right there. Watch him free release. Swan Cut's going to come off the edge, but he's going to get a free release without getting chipped into the secondary, and that gives a passing lane for Clinton to throw into. He is wide open. A blown assignment down on the goal line for Oregon State leads to that touchdown. Dodge scoring drive, five plays, 14 yards, just over two minutes, and Day's second touchdown tonight. Right. Going to run out of room, being chased by a half dozen or so Oregon Ducks. Ramon Reed got him, the 6'2 senior, outside linebacker. 10.55 remaining here in the third, and we'll see if the Duck defense can come up big again. They Forced the first Oregon State turnover last time the Beavers had the football. We're second down to 10 from the 34. Remember success in the first half for Oregon State when Derek Anderson was on target, those mid-range passes mainly into the middle of the field versus outside leverage coverage for the Oregon Ducks. Anderson spins one way, throws the other. Going to be very close to a first down. It's second effort. Well, the third down are very close to the first down. There's Mike Riley, local kid, quarterback Corvallis High back in 1970. You know, he's been involved himself with a couple of great rivalries. He's known what Alabama-Auburn's all about. You mentioned USC-UCLA, but even when he was away and even when he was he in the NFL, he always kept a keen eye on what was going on here. He used to sit in the stands when his dad was a coach, knew what this is all about, and just he realizes that there's a lot of special things about this that, you can't really equal anywhere else in the country. Oh, big hit, knocked out of bounds. J.D. Nelson, and he, he stood over. And in talking to Coach Riley yesterday, I had a chance to sit down and visit with him before the game. He's really enjoying it here at Oregon State. You know, he really enjoys what the, what the city has done, what the team has done, the athletic department has been great. He's really having a fun time, exciting time coaching football. He says the way this team is going to turn the corner to get offensive and defensive linemen, that is going to be the key where they'll be able to compete on a national level. He's getting himself a new quarterback too, isn't he? Matt Moore. Matt Moore has been committed to come to the University of Oregon State. Or Oregon State University. Thank you. you. Thank you. They'll be all over you with letters and emails <laughs> and everything else. That's right. Now more formally of UCLA, a one-time starter there, too. There's a late flag getting thrown in as the pass was behind. I think as we panned the crowd a moment ago, you saw part of the construction that is going on here, too. Maybe a little bit later on we'll get a chance to uh, talk about that further, but it is quite uh, an endeavor that they will get into. In fact, the entire far side stands will be going Pass down in two days. On the defense, number 47. Here's a look at Automatic it. First down, They're the redoing ball. the entire far side for next year. The east side is what we're looking at. will uh, all come down on Monday. And the four towers are what is standing right now in the construction zone. And it's quite a sight. We've seen pictures, we've seen the animation of what it's supposed to look like, and it is impressive. It will be an amazing Ooh. facility, one that will draw a recruit to come to Oregon State just for the simple fact of the playing conditions, the environment, the coaches, etc. First down, out to the penalty. The Beavers get into duck territory. Here comes the rush. Anderson steps up perfectly, throws it, incomplete. Ask and you shall receive. I told you about the animation, the computer animation that we saw. Well, you're going to get a chance to see it, too. The new Reeser Stadium. This is what it's going to look like when the construction is all said and done. A great facility. You can see they're already planning to pack the house. Look at all the, the, the difference of what uh, where this stadium has come. It used to only seat 28,000. Now it's up into the mid-30s. But when they get this done, it'll be a great stadium to play in 
great for the fans and a lot of enjoyment. Just great for the overall city and the, and the university. You like the fact that the offices overlook the football field, too. That's the best thing about it. You know, you can come in and go to practice and overlook the football field, watch the game. The best seat in the house is from Coach Riley's office. It's a great way to bring a recruit in, sit him down in the coach's office, and say, this is where you can be playing football for the next four years. One thing that Mike Riley will not have a problem doing is bringing quarterbacks and receivers to this program. This is a passing offense. It's wide open. Any receiver or quarterback would love to play in it. He's a great coach, a student of the game. So, you know, they're going to be able to draw the recruits necessary to build a great program. And for equal time, we'll talk about the Oregon program a little bit later on because they're coming off the best recruiting class maybe ever right. with Mike Bellotti. So they're looking to get back to the prominent level that they were at, too. Third down and six, trying to keep this drive alive. Nine and a half to go third quarter. On top, the Beavers, and with the football. In trouble, Anderson will run it again. He's done this as well as he has all season long. The decision-making is clicking for the senior quarterback, making his final appearance in Reeser Stadium. Chris Solomon, the senior defensive end, makes the stop. They'll move the chains for the Bees. Well, when you face a quarterback like Anderson, often as a defensive lineman, you don't stay in your lanes because you don't think he is a threat to run. On the year, he has negative 165, 165 yards rushing, and that's due to all the sacks. So he's not a running quarterback, not apt to run, but when you stay undisciplined, don't rush in your lane, he can make something happen. And certainly he's been emotionally ready for this game. I think that's been a question mark sometimes with Oregon. Are they as emotionally ready year after year as Oregon State? Oregon's played some high-profile national games when uh, Oregon State was struggling a little bit. Here's a throw towards the goal line. Good defense. No! Flag! Pushing. Aaron Gibson, the guilty party. Got tangled up with Haas, or is it going to go the other way? We'll have to wait for this one, because I thought well, it Gibson appeared was as though he had a great position. Yeah, so did I. Pushing. No, it's on Gibson. I thought Aaron Gibson that time was in perfect position. As a quarterback, you're entitled to the ball as well. Well, he just turned around. I got to be honest, I don't see the penalty. I think both players actually tried to position themselves to try to get in position to make that play. I think that's a better as a no call. But I think Aaron Gibson, I think he was robbed on that. I think he was in perfect position to make that play, and Mike Galati is letting the coaches hear about it, the referees hear about it. He definitely has a beat. 8.59 to go, third quarter. Here's Sarah College Football Saturday live from Corvallis. The Civil War, Oregon and Oregon State. Bill McDonald, John Jackson. First down and 10. Beavers with the aid of that marginal call. Right. They still can't get the running game going. You can, you can almost hear Mike Riley just throwing up his arms and saying, let's, let's just bag it. Let's just throw the football all night long. And that's what Coach Chris said to me yesterday as well. He said, look, every pregame speech was let's run the ball run the ball now he just says look let's just go out and play and be successful the first down line is being brought to you by overstock.com save up to get this now jj 70 percent every day i'm with you it's all about the o you feeling me with that? i'm all about the o myself second down you see what you split single back a couple of tight ends Anderson over the middle, lost it, touchdown! We're talking tight ends, it's Joe Newton's turn. Touchdown, Beaver. And they come right back and score again. We have continually talked about how well the how good the tight ends are in this conference. Well, this is a young tight end who will be one of the best in the conference, and that's Joe Newton, the sophomore. Nice job by Anderson once again, recognizing where the single coverage was, recognizing where his mismatch was. It was Newton on the linebacker, Anthony Trucks, for that score. There's uh, hardly a player around the conference or around the nation that's not banged up at this time of the year. Newton's been nursing a sore shoulder. He's feeling a whole lot better right now. Eight plays, 66 yards, touchdown, quarterback to tight end. 34-21, Beaver. I'm guessing 34 push-ups with a little help from uh, her friends. 34-21. Yeah, really they are. Ryan Shaw bringing it back to the Ducks, tipped up, flagged down. 
Spins out past the 25-yard line. All right, doctor, tell us straight for him. Touchdown. Okay, well, here's Newton right here. He's going to be in a bunch set. You're going to watch the receivers come across the face of Anderson. That clears out the safety in the middle. And then Newton is right behind him, one-on-one -on -one with trucks. Good recognition by Derek Anderson, recognizing the mismatch, and that was Newton on the outside linebacker. And Anderson making all the throws, stepping up and firing. That one just kind of lofting it over the defensive lineman and the defender. Pass Carson Palmer, inching up on the list. Been a tremendous career for the quarterback. This flag is going to go against Oregon again. He joined us late, the two most penalized the teams Holy. in the conference. Holding on the return team, number 64. Billy's of course, 10 yards penalized. from the end of the return. First down. Well, Oregon State is rolling things offensively after that big win last week against Stanford. You know, they've hit the easy spot of their schedule, so to speak, the latter half of the year. Easy except for the number one team in the country in the fall. And they've been able to roll off four out of five and wins an advantage in that of second half of the schedule. And it, it's truly a case of the first half built them for the second half. Clements. Getting pinned down and down he goes. Swan cut adds another. Boy, he's... Winning that battle over Adam Snyder. Well, if you're able to get pressure with the front four guys, that is the key to success. Mark Baker said, if we get in a situation where we have to blitz, that's going to mean there's going to be trouble for our defense. This defensive line has played inspired throughout the night. They've been able to constantly get pressure on Clemens, only bringing four. The four guys up front have had a phenomenal game to this point. Blanca for the year has a third of the team's total in South. Clemens lost it. Sideline got a man open. Incomplete. Terrence Whitehead was there with room to run down the sideline and couldn't bring it in. And we often talk what great hands Whitehead has. Maybe some of the best on the team. The second leading receiver on this team coming into the game with 40 reception is Whitehead, normally sure-handed, and that is one he has to catch because it gets his team out of a hole. Great play call by the Oregon Duck coaches. They were able to see the one-on-one -on -one matchup and get Whitehead in the open space necessary. You see Newson coming over late, but that would have been a big game to get them out of a hole. Shoulder back down the way. Third <laughs> down from the 15. Pinning back their ears. Beavers, here they come. Closing in. Clemens in trouble. Scrambles. Throws across his body. Incomplete. Threw it away that time. Lived to fight another day. But the drop by Whitehead. Huge. As the crowd roars for the defense. One thing that was lacking from this Oregon team the last couple weeks in their two losses was the ability for players to make plays. No playmakers have stepped up in the last two weeks, and that's what's lacking again tonight. They need somebody else besides Clemens to make a play. Up now for Dittman to come up big. David the junior. Strotter back. Not a good kick. Reverting back to form earlier in the year. Sweet field position for Oregon State. Reminder, folks, Priest Holmes, Randy Moss, well, they're still hurt. Eli Manning is getting to start New York, and Ben Roethlisberger, he's pretty good. He's yet to lose. What will happen in Week 11, and what free agents will help round out your roster? Well, the Ultimate Fantasy Football Show, they've got all the answers, and the only place to find it is tonight at 10.30 here on FSN. And the spirit of Corvallis is in the full force tonight. 28-yard punt by Dittman. And they'll start the drive at the 43. Anderson, save for the interception, has been on fire tonight. And he'll throw again. Derrick throws. Right there. Caught again. He's just picking apart the Ducks. George Gillette. He had to come up big. They thrust the senior into the spotlight. He's got the respect of his teammates, and he's showing it here tonight, filling in 
for Anthony Wheat Brown. And Anderson has all kinds of time to throw. He's standing back in the pocket, able to just sit back and pick receivers. This is like this is like seven on seven for him. He has no pressure, nobody in his face. He's just standing back there, and when he can do that, that's when he's most effective. Coates, Linen, Brock, Schooning, Ninehouse, the starting five up front for Oregon State. Last year, they were beaten in the trenches. This year, they're winning it. Screen in the middle. Pop with room. Here comes Newton. Down to the five. Everything's working. And the tight end's in the middle of a lot of it. J.D. Nelson, along with a couple of friends, brought him down first and goal, Oregon State. Remember, this is a team without a running game, so they need to create deception with strictly their passing game and screens and draws those type of things are what's enabling them to have so many open spaces in the secondary for the Oregon Ducks. This inside tight end screen has worked twice on the night. Ducks catch a break. I did not see the flag. Might have been a late flag in fact. And, uh, that fan uh, relieved for the moment. Coming to work with the hard hat. Not a lot to cheer about. Every time Oregon gets within that one score the Beavers come back. Reason to be upset. Well, this defense for the Ducks, they need a stop. They cannot allow another touchdown. This game could get out of reach if they do. They need to stop them right here. Yeah, they got to get pressure on Anderson. Better pressure. They just, I don't know if they're going to have to bring more players or, or, or mix things up. Here's a throw down the middle. Touch! Touchdown! Pass! Former walk-on. A year ago, when Mike Riley took over, he was still a walk-on without a scholarship. He came on to back up Newsom a year ago, went on to become the starter, earned his scholarship. Now, one of the best to play at the university. He beat Demetrius Spates. You know, coming into the game, most folks said, all right, the records are identical, but really, when you look at the talent, this is the most evenly matched game between the two in many years. Well, right now, the Beavers are certainly dominating. How about the night that Anderson has had? Touchdown pass to half. That was the start of the night. An inside route with another touchdown that you can see he has a hot hand. He's rushed for a score tonight. It has been the Derek Anderson show and then the last one. Pass down the middle, a similar post route to the first touchdown of the night. And that has Oregon State on top big in the Civil War. 279, he's bearing in on 300. You know, only Timmy Chang of Hawaii has more 300 yard plus games in his career. Anderson, it would be his 15th. He's not that close to Chang, he's got 32. But still, for the second to that impressive number. We talked about he's one of six quarterbacks to throw for more than 10,000 yards. He's one of two to throw for over 4,000 in a season a couple years ago. Clemens and the Ducks are going to have to get moving here with 5.58 remaining in the third. Affleck, remember? Here's the Affleck Duck. He's not happy either. But he'll give you the trivia question uh, in case you missed it. 108th meeting between these two schools. What two Division 1A rivals have met the most? I did not get this one. Look in the Big Ten. Minnesota, Wisconsin. Ah, I was right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> 114 times they've knocked heads. Ducks in dire straits. Down big, 20 points. Whitehead. Boy, how big was that drop in the last series? Oregon State turned it right into points after the bad punt. That would have gotten him out of trouble, and he might have even gone. Rivalry games are always surrounded by big plays and momentum swings. That drop ball with a chance for Oregon to swing the momentum in their favor, put them in good field position. As opposed to that, they had to punt, give Oregon State great field position, and, of course, the hot hand of Derek Anderson, when he has that kind of opportunity, he's not going to let that slip away for a touchdown. Whitehead, second leading runner in the conference. Will he get it again? Clemens will throw. Look out for behind! 
One cut. His second tonight, fourth for the Beavers. And Oregon just can't protect the quarterback this year. The career sack leader at Oregon State. When you talk to the coaches, they say, describe him, he just plays fast. And that is exactly what that was, a fast rush. He gets around the corner, he beats Snyder one-on-one. -on -one. And for the defensive line, it's gonna get, it's gonna be very much more difficult for Oregon's offensive line to block them now that they can pin their ears back and put pressure on the quarterback. Second down and long. Clemens inside handoff this time. Dante Rosario finally gets his hands on the football. The 6'4", rather, sophomore, and Brandon Browner there to wrap him up. There's Dante. Playing more of an H-back this year as opposed to fullback, which he saw much of last season. And he's another option that Kellen Clemens needs to look to, especially in a situation as they're in now with the... Being down, of course, the receivers are going to be blanketed often. They're going to use some combination coverage on them. Look for Rosario. He can slip out of the backfield. Let's see if Coach Lottie uses Rosario and uses Whitehead out of the backfield because they're the ones that are going to draw that single cover. Third down and 15. Demetrius Williams, the man in motion. Four-man rush. Now a late blitz by a backer. Clemens all sorts of time. Had a man. Couldn't get it. Flag down. Strong was wide open. Clemens was doing a little dance, wasn't really on balance when he threw the football, although he did have time. That time, the line gave it to him. We'll check the flag. Oregon might catch one here and uh, get a new set of downs. Pass interference on the defense, number two. 15 yard penalty, previous spot, automatic. Well, touchdown. Mike Bellotti, the uh, Oregon coach, two wins away from tying the legendary Len Casanova, uh, all time second all-time in wins in Oregon. You see the last six seasons, what has happened since the glory days of 98 to 2001. Offense has fallen off, but not by much in the yards. But uh, not only did he have a good run of quarterbacks, Akili Smith, Joey Harrington, but they had a lot of good players around him, a lot of good targets. Uh, and it's, you know, it's tough to get... We'll, we'll come back to that in a second, JJ, because I want you in on this conversation. Here's Clemens. He's going up on top to Williams. Did he get one fit in, and did he out control? I don't think so. It's going to be incomplete. Oregon was the premier, really the premier program in the conference two, three years ago. Better than SC, better than UCLA, better than anybody else. They got there, but it's tough to stay on top. SC's just kind of blown by him again. They were able to draw a lot of good recruits from throughout California. They did a great job recruiting in California. Pulled some great talent out of California. Sammy Parker, of course, played here. We talked about Harrington. They had a lot of guys that are playmakers. They have playmakers on this team, but they're all young. I think Demetrius Williams, only a junior. Weatherspoon, Cameron Colvin, one of the best receivers coming out a year ago, will be a factor in years to come. Colvin hasn't given them as much this year as they had hoped. Pass intended for Kyle Weatherspoon. Colvin's caught 14 balls coming into the game. I remember the billboard campaigns down in Southern California going right into the heart of USC and UCLA country. The Heisman campaign of Joey Harrington. I mean, this man right there just took this program to even another level. Rich Brooks really had it going. And Mike Bellotti, who really could have gone anywhere he wanted to a couple years ago, right. decided to stay in Eugene. And the good folks there. Very loyal to Very University. happy. Yes, yeah. they are. They got their man. Third on the Dutch overall coaching list. Yeah, almost a overall record. Two away from Casanova. Here on third down, incomplete. As sharp as Anderson is, Clem is just in there today. Intended for Weatherspoon again. And remember, he had an off week a week ago against UCLA. And in talking to the coaches, they said that, you know, that was the first bad game he really played in a month and a half. He was the first one in to watch film the next Sunday. He came in 7 o'clock in the morning, watched film, tried to iron it out, had a good week of practice, and they expected him to come up with a good week. Now, his supporting cast has not been there as well, but he has not had a great game tonight either. Yeah, he's old for his last five. The fair catch is made at the 
11 yard line. All right, let's take you back to another Civil War game that we'd like to recall. 1998, this was maybe the best game ever. Uh, Ken Simonton in OT, Akili Smith to Jed Weaver to tie it in the first OT. After an Oregon field goal, Kenny Simonton will end it right here on this field, 44-41. Let the people come on the field and celebrate maybe the most thrilling of them all of the 107 previous to this in the Civil War. A perfect example of why record does not matter. Oregon State 4-6 and six coming into that game, and the Ducks were 8-2. and two two overtimes and you know that the fans actually came on the field after the first overtime because an incomplete pass they thought ended it it took two more overtimes to finish that game off had to clear the field and get him back playing again his right i still shake my head that Akili smith wasn't more successful at the next level he was uh, through one of the, the great balls i ever saw in, in college football during uh, during his time at oregon and i think it's a credit to the coaching staff of oregon of course they had good coaches that able to bring Achilles Smith and you know really develop him he came in as a just a, strictly a raw talent had a strong arm a lot of athletic ability over the course of his career became a great quarterback and of course as you mentioned a high pick in the NFL draft and then things just didn't work out for him a lot of time it's chemistry with the coaches and the system four and a half to play third quarter 20 point lead for the Beavers with the football on second down they're still throwing and incomplete intended for half the importance of this game we'll take a look at the Pac-10 standings and these two teams even up. USC, if they win out, most likely a national championship attempt. Cal, BCS bound perhaps, of course, the Rose Bowl they have in sight. Then who is going? The only other team in the Pac-10 that's going to a bowl is one of these two. Whoever wins will go. As mentioned, I, I, I throw out the scenarios that Oregon, possibly the insight in Oregon State, the Sun, but so much, of course, is gonna depend on those last two. Well, the next two games for SC, remember SC has to play Notre Dame, and UCLA, they'll be prohibitive favorites in both. And Cal has that makeup game against Southern Miss. You say no chance of going to lose that one, JJ. No, no, Cal will win either. Anderson runs again, first down. He's absolutely magic tonight. Remember, in the Pac-10, you have to have six wins to become bowl eligible. Another reason why this game is so important and why everything is on the line. Well, Oregon, it looks like their bowl streak of nine consecutive years could be snapped this season. Coach Riley, one of the good guys around. After a four-year stint in the NFL. 19 yards rushing. Thanks to Hal Cowan, who's doing stats for us tonight. He's Long time sports information director. Still has the keys to the kingdom, though, as we saw beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, our thanks to Casey, too, for spotting for us. He's freezing. He wants to get in and get a little fire going somewhere, but he's putting in some time here today. 41 21. Knots out with that last tackle. And really, he's the only guy that's really shown up on that defensive front for Oregon today. The first down line is brought to you by Overstock.com. Visit Overstock.com today and start saving. It's all about the O. Second and ten. Anderson over the middle. Complete and straight down. Marcel Lowe with the reception. Gain of five on the play. Clock winding down third quarter. Any controlled passing game now is front and center for Oregon State. They're not going to control it on the ground. They're just going to control it with short passes down the field. And that's due to the absence of an effective and good running game. So Mike Riley still has his work cut out for them. Up by 20 points, ideally you'd love to run the ball, eat some time off the clock, but with the way that the offense is sort of formed and the strength being at receiver and quarterback and not on the run game, they have to throw that controlled passing game between keep the clock right. On third down, first down. Ducks just can't stop him. And more. Marcel Love showing some of that speed. You know, they don't go downfield too often to him, so he decided to go downfield himself. Lots of run after catch. 35 yards. 
and into duck territory. Now, Love is up at the top of your screen here. Now, you mentioned he's going to go with the inside route, but watch the missed tackles, the run after catch by Love. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage, but he breaks the tackle there. Now, two guys have him there. A third misses, a fourth, and Love picks up big yardage after the catch. The Oregon secondary is not playing very well. That's the strength of this defense. They are not showing up tonight. Out of a bit of a funky formation, they're going to give it to Wright. Well, I'm going to make a statement that all you Oregon fans know exactly what I'm talking about. They're not tackling well again tonight either. That has been a bugaboo the last couple of weeks. In fact, it's been a problem the last couple of years. Wrapping up and stopping. By the way, Derek Anderson now, 21 for 30. 319, so he's gone over the Magic 300 mark again. Four touchdowns and an interception. And uh, most importantly, I think, just making all the right decisions. Second and 11. Minute and a half to go in the third. <laughs> and uh, just a little bit too anxious, I believe. Is that Nada? Pelote wanted in. Couldn't wait. Dead ball, offside by contact on the defense, number 90. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And that's going to drive Coach Bilotti crazy. Offside. The nose guard right over the ball by Tete in the neutral zone too early. Second down and six. Now this crowd has been amped up from the start. They've had a lot to cheer about. Right now with their team comfortably ahead, they're just kind of enjoying things. Right! Biggest run of the day! Inside the 10 of the eight-yard line. Ryan Gilliam saved the touchdown. Well, he's not your pure home run guy. Still, he came in with four carries over 45 yards. That one... Pretty big, 21 to his total. Now watch this big 61, the tackle. That's going to be Adam Coates. He's going to kick out and open up that running lane. Now, Oregon State, they run that three-receiver set. What that forces is the defense to spread out horizontally across the field and open up those natural running lanes. So when the offensive line gets off the ball and is able to fit into their guys in the defensive line, there's going to be room to run, and that's exactly what happened on that last play. Full 10 yards to go for Anderson in the touchdown. Throws, got his man incomplete. Newton almost had it, and that's a big target, and he's got a huge wingspan. He almost brought it down. Fifth in the Pac-10 in receptions is Joe Newton. A release. And just breaks right to the corner. Just off to his fingertips. Really the only open receiver that Anderson has missed tonight. He had Newton there. He had an easy throw. That's only about a 10, 15-yard throw. That's one he wished he could have had back because he's been on target. He's made that throw all night long. J.D. Nelson giving chase for the Ducks. Marcel Love is the motion man. Flags down, no play. 27 seconds remaining in the third. Oregon State has spread it out. 10 points in the first, 17 in the second, 14 points here in the third. So, touchdown in every Here's quarter. Oregon can say the same now. On the offense, number 69. Five penalty, still second down. Time is please set the they also have a touchdown in every quarter. Lining the guilty party. They'll move it back five yards. Second down and goal from the 15-yard line. The theme for this Oregon State Beaver offense is always to protect Anderson. This offensive line, they've been phenomenal tonight. They've done a nice job of protecting him. He's taken very few hits, only a couple sacks, and that's why he's been so effective. The young guys on the left side have done well. Anderson, in the midst of his 15th 300-yard-plus game, throws towards the end zone incomplete. Again, it was Newton, and again, the coverage by J.D. Nelson. Nelson giving away eight inches in that battle with number 89. And another one-handed try by the tight end. 
third down upcoming. This is why Newton is the comfort zone for Derek Anderson at 6'7". He knows he can throw it up. Now, he's covered. That's good coverage in the secondary by Nelson. But as long as Anderson keeps the ball up high, only the 6'7", Newton has a chance, and the defender at 5'11", does not. Oregon defense thinking we got to hold him to three. That would make him 24 points. That's three okay. scores. And, right. Three two-point conversions. So this is a huge play for them over the middle. That's three plays off fingertips. Hawkins that time out of Long Beach Poly, that football factory in Southern California, the Jackrabbits. The junior couldn't bring it in. Fourth and goal, and Alexis Cerna will be called upon. Hawkins in the receiver rotation tonight with George Gillette. Anthony Wheat Brown not available due to suspension, so Hawkins gets his opportunity. He had an opportunity to start the year, dropped a couple passes, and so he sort of lost his opportunity. Now back in the lineup due to Wheat Brown's suspension. Cerna, what a great story he's been. Could have completely fallen apart after that first game when you missed the three PATs, including the one to extend the game. But he's battled back and been sensational. College Football Saturday returns next week, beginning with a special edition on Friday, as 20th-ranked ASU takes on Arizona in a showdown between in-state rivals. Then on Saturday, 23rd-ranked Oklahoma State looks to get past upset-minded Texas Tech. Now, it all begins at 3 in the East, noon here in the Pacific. Friday and Saturday only on FSN, but make sure to check local listings for the games and start time in your area. How about 12 plays, 72 yards, chewed up, a little over... Four minutes. <laughs> and he gets the... Uh, it's a lot of push-up push on duty. Stand. Yeah, he, he's not doing the work. His buddies are. Derek Anderson, big night. Couldn't get his receivers to put the glue on the last time. Would have tied a career-high five touchdown passes. Had one of the fellas hung on. He might have another opportunity. Remember, we're still in the third quarter. 44-21. Cerna approaches. As the temperature dips here in Corvallis. Kenny Washington. All Pac-10 last year at this position. Showing why right here. Finding some room and out of bounds. <laughs> He's on fire. He's smoking right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the case. I'm smoking, but it's cold up there. Yeah, well, I, oh, yeah, I, saw, I saw your breath at half. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those numbers. 319 yards, four touchdowns. Most importantly, only one interception. And efficient, 21 for 33. He has been throwing it only, what, about a 52% clip this year. 53% percentage-wise. His counterpart, Clemens, who's on the field right now, chasing Danny O'Neill, 1993. 61.9%. Clemens came in at 61.2. He's going to have to have an incredible fourth quarter to beat that fumble. Swancutt was in to knock it away. Covered, however, by Oregon. They maintain possession as the quarter ends. Beavers loving their home cooking. The Civil War belonging to the home team again. Three chapters written in this one, and it reads great for OSU. 44, 21. The rivalries continue in the Pac-10. Washington, Washington State, the Apple Cup going on, the big game earlier won by Cal. This is the Civil War. Arizona, Arizona State next week. SC UCLA in two weeks. Second down and long for Clemens. Has had a rough afternoon. This one is caught near the original line of scrimmage by Terrence Whitehead. Through three quarters, Oregon had only thrown for 86 yards compared to Oregon State's 336. The rushing totals are just about even. It's in the air that Oregon State has absolutely taking this football game and they lead 44 21 for well, the coaching staff for Oregon was ecstatic to get their playmakers back in the back in the game this week and that's Tim Day Demetrius Williams but only 86 yards passing through three quarters that is not up to the standards of Clemens and this Oregon offense they're much better than that they have just not performed or made plays tonight here they come on third down but a timeout is called 
first time out of this half, first of their three. We'll take a quick break, be right back to Corvallis, Oregon. A lot of smiles around these parts. Mom, Dad, your kids are fine. They're enjoying themselves here, as you can see at the game. Our Napa Auto Care Center, Anderson, four touchdown passes, ran one in. Clements has struggled, pass once again over 100 yards. Kellen now on third down and nine out of shotgun. I think it just went out of his hand. Is that incomplete? A fumble? It slipped out of his hands. It should be an incomplete. That's an incomplete pass. I don't think anybody touched him. If his hand is going forward and it slipped out, that's an incompletion. I don't think it, he was hit at all. JJ, let's look at it. Well, the ball is definitely going to slip out of his hand. I don't know if that ball's going forward. I don't think it is going forward. And that would have been a recovery for the Beavers. So the Ducks catch a break in that situation because that should have been a fumble. Well, Oregon State will still get the ball, but it will be a yardage situation. They would have had it around the 40. Now, Struther will get this punt. And he's going to run with it. Did not signal for a fair catch. The coverage blew right past him. And he'll bring it out to the 30-yard line. And we'll break again. We're a minute in. Same old song and dance. The home team winning the Civil War. Kia Sarah's presenting Pac-10 College Football Saturday, coast to coast on FSN. The long faces of the Duck Faithful that made the trip north from Eugene to Corvallis. They're down 44-21, still 14 minutes left. Anderson will give it up to right, and he's caught from behind. The line of scrimmage, and down he goes. Well, Oregon State is already, with one quarter remaining, scored their most points in a game this year, and the Ducks have allowed the most points this season at 44. And the last four times that this game has been played here in Corvallis, the winning team has scored over 40 points, so that trend will stay intact as well. Over 37,000 in the house tonight. And when we convene here again in a couple of years for the Civil War, the attendance will be much higher. That's right. Because the facility will be much larger. Modernized, big scoreboard, all the amenities. Ryan Cole, the bruiser, comes into the game, the tailback. On second down and 10. Derek Anderson. Good catch. Boy, good throw, but give credit to his receiver. Pass has those kind of hands. You throw it anywhere near him. Behind him, in front, behind, the side. He'll get it. And it's a good coverage on the outside. Anderson's going to throw this ball out in front of Haas. Watch the catch by Haas. Completely extended. That is why he's having such a great year this year. It's been a, just a fun, it's, it's a great story. You know, he's a walk-on player that came to the school. And when Dennis Erickson was here, they were going to offer him a scholarship. But since Erickson left and Mike Riley comes in, he had to re-earn his scholarship, so to speak. It took him a couple games to do that. By the end of fall camp, he was given the scholarship. Just call him Mr. Reliable. Ryan Cole. Ryan Cole's had to earn just about every yard that he's gained this year. You know, he's carried 68 times prior to that one for 199 yards. But included in that was a 79-yarder. So in the other 67 carries, he's gained only 120 yards. That is truly a yard and a cloud of dust for the Port Orchard product, the sophomore. But he'll get to the, the tough yard or two when you need it. Only a sophomore, 233 pounds. He'll be back again. And he's the incumbent running back with Dwight Wright. The senior out of Diamond Bar, California, graduates and moves on, and that'll give Cole the opportunity to start next year. Anderson, again, all sorts of time, but threw that one late. That was right for the picking for Aaron Gibson. Intended for George Gillette. Not a great throw. We've seen a lot of great throws by Anderson, but that really wasn't one of them, and uh, just good defense by Gibson, the 5'9 junior. Now we've been picking on the secondary for Oregon, but one person that has played good throughout the year is Gibson. Nice job there, able to get a hand in. 
He started as a freshman in 11 games and sort of trial by fire as they threw him into the mix. A year ago, he once started as a sophomore, and this year he's been their best government. you got to remember, that's a long throw for the quarterback. If you're on the far hash and you're throwing it down the field into the uh, far sideline, that's a, a pretty decent throw. That's a perfect throw. Pass. How do you get so wide open? It's third down. You're the number one target on the team, and you're open by five yards. Derek Anderson has created that situation. He's created the one-on-one -on -one matchup. See how his head is down the field? He comes over to half, recognize the coverage, comes back to him late, and that's the key to this offense. If you're able to spread the ball around, it'll force the defense to stay balanced and leave half in one-on-one -on -one coverage at times. That time with half into the boundary, they choose to defend him with the single-man coverage, and of course he can beat that every single time. Remember Anthony Wheat Brown, the suspended one, had 11 catches last game. Well, Haas has nine catches for over 154 yards for the Beavers, and they're just driving and killing time, moving for more points inside the 45-yard line. Block 12 and a half showing, and it's all Oregon State. Solomona makes the stop for Oregon. And every time you Chris. see Oregon State run the ball, it doesn't seem like it's a token run. They, they run it just to say that we can do it, and then they're going to go right back to the air with Anderson. They don't want to run the ball in this offense. They want to throw it, but they have to sometimes just to keep just to keep everybody happy. They've had some big runs. Some, actually, their biggest runs have come from the quarterback, Anderson, scrambling for first downs. Although Wright did get a couple big ones, setting up a screen, and there it is. Newton, first down, they'll move the chains for the Beavers. Inside the 35 to the 34, J.D. Nelson, he's seen enough for number 89. But J.D. is going to see a lot of good tight ends, as we talked about. Did we run down the list? We haven't run down the list, but we need to. Yeah, we do. After this call. All right. You were writing them down a few minutes ago. See, now you lost the paper. I <laughs> got <Yeah. laughs> Roughing the passer. On the, the defense, passer. Number 84. 15 yards penalty will be added to a little the little end of the run. First pouring down. in for the mindset of the Ducks. Well, they have had very little pressure on Anderson throughout the day. And so now that they get a chance, you can see trucks with two or three extra steps before he hit Anderson. That's a frustration penalty, obviously, for Oregon. They are frustrated. A year ago in this game, they dominated up front. They were able to put pressure on Anderson throughout the game, all game long, and was the main reason why they won that game. Tonight, a different story. This offensive line for Oregon State playing their best game of the year. They're in the red zone, which means automatic, at least some points, for Oregon State. Ryan Cole gets his obligatory yard or two. And he'll come back in to join the fray. And now it's just pride. Toyina and uh, Reed combine to make the tackle. Yeah, it's a rivalry game. You want to keep your head, head, head up right now. This uh, bowl opportunity for Oregon is going to uh, end. And it's been a long, good run for Mike Bellotti. Nine years in a row bowling. Second and eight. Anderson. Steps up and throws. And it's incomplete. Right at the goal line. Flag down. After they both went sprawling, has the intended receiver. Madsen, the emotional leader in there, trying to plead his case. Gibson, once again, will be the flagged party. It's been a long afternoon for the defense of Oregon. It's one of those games where the other team is clicking on everything. Pass interference on the defense, number five. 15 yards in the previous spot, automatic first down. Let's just read you the numbers. 368, Oregon State, 96. That man's team right there. And it's first and goal. I don't think that Mike Pilati and Nick Aliotti, the head coach and the defensive coordinator, haven't tried everything. They've been in zone coverage. They played quarters coverage. They played man coverage. They just cannot come up with the formula to slow down this Oregon State team. First down and goal. Anderson in charge. Cole trying to dance around a little bit, and the scrum pushes him back. 
by Tete. In there, the freshman tackle. By Tete, along with others. Well, Oregon, they've got five wins on the year, although for their wins in the conference, the team's record five and 23. Although the exact same wins belong to Oregon State. They really uh, beat up on the bottom feeders, did these two they teams. Have, yeah. Oregon State had to play SC. Oregon missed them this year. But they're still not going to go to a bowl game. Anderson throws for the uh, corner of the end zone incomplete. Pass again, the target. Well, if Oregon State holds on and wins, they're going to uh, complete the Northwest trifecta. And that hasn't happened since 1974. It's been 20 years, 30 years, 30 years since they beat Washington, Washington State, and Oregon in the same year. And they're going to do it this season. They're going to own this territory. <laughs> and that's surprising, considering the good teams that they have been able to field in recent memory. Jonathan Smith, of course, the quarterback for some of those good teams. And that year they went, had one loss and should have won the national championship. Third down. A great pop that time by the Duck defense. Led by J.D. Nelson. Marcel Love took the punishment. Now the defense from Oregon is extremely young. Only three seniors. And so they have a learning curve to get over. This is the big hit. Right down the goal line. A big hit by Nelson. Here comes Alexis Cerna. Only a sophomore. That entire secondary comes back for Oregon. Including uh, the majority of backups if they run in there on nickel and dime coverage. Cerna, this should be an easy one for him. He's been in uh, great rhythm for most of the year. The semifinalist Luke Rose Award probably won't win it, but uh, just to come uh, back from down on the mat to where he is right now is an accomplishment as matchup. Big lead for the Beavers. Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless Phones. All the features, none of the hassles. And brought to you in part by Cialis. Cialis is here. Ask your doctor if a free sample of Cialis is right for you. By Denny, we're cooking now. And by Toyota, moving forward. That 40-mile trip home is going to be a long one tonight. Down south to Eugene. Kenny Washington, corralled, circle, down he goes, flag down though. Well, I was here at this stadium, 1999, when Oregon State beat Cal to secure their first winning season in 28 years. It was a, a thrilling moment for uh, everyone involved with the program, and uh, that was a turning point. It was Dennis Erickson's first Dennis year, and uh, ever since then, they haven't looked back. Scoring drive, 66 yards on 12 plays. And it was brought to you by Dodd. Cerner with his fourth field goal of the night. You mentioned 1999 being the first year in a long, first, a long 28 time. years being the first winning season. Well, Coach Riley at 5-6 and six in 1998, that was the best OSU record in 27 years, so they were getting progressively better when Erickson took over. I got that 28-year record in on him. Telling Clements, got a man Whitehead, he's open with some room to run. So Terrence Whitehead continues to uh, put up impressive numbers on the receiving end of things. Savvy Piscatelli, the sophomore, the talented one from Boca Raton, Florida. You see... Uh, over the last few years, also more and more out-of-state players sprinkling in on these rosters. I think that's the key for both teams. Both teams need to recruit, especially in California. There's a huge talent pool in California. They need to continue to do a good job of recruiting in California because that's the base of what made both these programs so good. Clements will be back next year to get another shot at these guys. Incomplete. Well, you could... Feel the entire air of the entire balloon deflate 
that drop pass at the end of the Cal game. And uh, they have not recovered from that. That whole second half when Cal battled back and then an opportunity to come back and finally win. And then uh, they didn't take care of business last week against UCLA. Haven't even been close here tonight. You talked about the turning point of that game was when Tim Day went out with the injury, was unable to return for the second half after scoring two touchdowns in the first half. Clemens, little shuttle pass. That is trouble. Is it picked? It might be picked by Swancott. It is. Swancott has caught a pass, picked one, had a couple of sacks. The senior from Salem is going out in style. His first interception of the season. Look at him. Love it. A game to remember for number 90. What has he meant to this Oregon State? Look at that. Reads the shovel pass, steps right into the passing lane to come up with that interception. But what has he meant to Oregon State? He shares the team record with 36 consecutive starts before tonight, this being number 37. So he's been consistent, and he's been dominant. Did I give him two sacks or three? Because he's got three sacks tonight. Three sacks, a catch, a lot of hurries. Just adding to that record. And his first interception. Third turnover for Clemens and the Ducks. Anderson looking for more. Goes towards the end zone. Incomplete. Seen a lot of those in this second half. Pass up the ladder again, just off the fingertip. So not the pinpoint accuracy that we saw Derek Anderson throwing with in the first half. Didn't need to be, though, here in the second half. 9.04, still left, 47-21. No, Mike Riley was talking to us earlier this week about focusing on details, that it's all out in front of us. He wanted this team to realize their identity and really put an exclamation point on this year, and they have certainly done that. Bowl game on the line, the rivalry, and just realizing how good this team can be. Stutter step to start off by Cole. Back he goes. And again, playing for bragging rights. Again, we get on the soapbox. Maybe we'll see a trophy to be given away. Hot Allen <laughs> alongside said At one point, they were giving away some sort of trophy, but there were problems to be had. Here we come! What the same Here we come, baby! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Having a lot of fun. One thing that Coach Riley mentioned that his team needed to do, not only pay attention to detail, but he said, he told his team that they'd be their defining moment, how they'd be remembered, is how they finished the season. And they played extremely well toward the second half of this season. And I think that sort of turned things around for the program. And the players have taken that responsibility on their shoulders and have responded well. Third down, play action. Oh, there was a uh, blocking in front, but it hit the receiver in the back. By the way, congratulations and good luck to that man right there. Chuck Zubin, he's retiring after 32 years in the Pac-10, including officiating two national championship games. He's had his share of booze, and he's probably loved every single minute of it. We wish him all the best. Job well done. 32 years in the conference, retiring after this one, Chuck Zubin. Often be, underappreciated. I was going to say the unsung contributor. That's right. They take a lot of flack, but uh, you know, do, do so much good for the game. More good than bad, quite obviously. 37-yard attempt, Alexis Cerna. Little jumping on both sides. That was to be a 36-yarder from the right half. And then move it back. A lot of point and fingers. It's like a couple of little brothers. He did it. No, he did. Dead ball, offside, on the defense. Tough. Defense move it closer, defense not defense enough defense. to secure a first down. Start. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Certainly hope you've enjoyed it wherever you may be around our country, watching Pac-10 football presented by Kia Serra. And you mentioned the year that Cerna has had since those three misses in the opening game against LSU. 11 of 12 prior to tonight. This would, of course, be his fifth field goal. How about another sign that it's not your night? Oregon, right. 13 penalties for the Ducks. Against the team that's the most penalized in the Pac-10 in Oregon State. Giving them opportunities, yardage. Cerna just absolutely nails. 50 to 21. Well, back in 2000, may have been the most anticipated Civil War matchup ever. Two of the best teams 
to take the field. Oregon was ranked fifth, OSU eight. Joey Harrington, who never threw a touchdown pass, never did in a Civil War game through five picks. Jonathan Smith, Robert Prescott, a couple of touchdowns in the first quarter. Oregon State won 23-13. They went on and beat Notre Dame in the Fiesta Bowl. They were good. Knocked Oregon out of the Rose Bowl that year, too. Oregon went on to play in the Holiday Bowl in that year. That was a very good Oregon State team. You mentioned that victory over Notre Dame. But they were the best team in the country, and that goes right back to the rankings and how people go to different bowls and the need for a playoff system. A lot of heads hanging right now on the Oregon sideline. This is one to forget for them. Cerna has tied his own school record five field goals in a game. Eight minutes still to play. The indignity of seeing your opponent put up a 50 on you. 50 to 21, what we thought was going to be close, and I thought everybody else did, especially after the first quarter. And the Beavers have a proof proficient. In fact, with eight minutes to go, it, it's such a route, we can give away our player of the game, our Kia Sarah phone player of the game. It's Derek Anderson. Phenomenal stuff tonight. 351 yards. He's thrown four touchdowns. He's rushed for another. But most importantly, he has thrown the ball to his guys. He has thrown one interception on the night. Been very efficient and very effective. And you know, that's sort of how this team functions. They are reliant on him distributing the ball to all of his different receivers and not throwing interceptions. He's had a lot of pressure, and he's come through tonight. Throwing it to his guys is the <laughs> most important thing. <laughs> well, you know, it's easier said than done. You know, when this team came back, a little adversity, of course, with those suspensions to a couple of key players. One a backup lineman, one a starting wide receiver. A little internal strife, and they've come back from that very well. Eight minutes to go. Most points ever scored by Oregon State in this series. 50, so a little bit of history tonight. You can add that to your fast Civil War facts. We started uh, mentioning this game in the same breath as the Civil War back in the 20s. I think it officially was deemed the Civil War contest back then in the 30s. They've been playing since 1894. This one taking a crazy hop. Prior to tonight, where Oregon State has scored 50 points, their highest scoring game was in 2002, where they won here again in Corvallis, 45-24. So recent memory, they broke a couple records with the most points scored in the Civil War, 2002, and of course beating that tonight. And they will wait and see where they wind up in the bowl configuration. As he figures to go to the Orange Bowl, the FedEx Orange Bowl. Cal then would go to the Rose Bowl, and uh, they would slot from there. Arizona State, probable Holiday, Holiday Bowl. Bowl. Right. And you know there's going to be a lot of points in there. You can't you can't show up in the Holiday Bowl and not put up 40, 50 points. Right. It just goes with the territory there. Out to the 18-yard line. Whitehead still grinding it out. The junior, he'll be back. Racking up more 100-yard games. The one thing that continues to amaze me in this series is how the home team plays at home. Obviously driven by emotion in a civil war and a rivalry game. Oregon State completely dominated tonight, similar to the way Oregon dominated a year ago. It's going to be eight in a row now in the series. Whitehead cuts it inside, or at least tried to cut it inside. And then got brought down by Eric Williams, the cousin of Sean Williams, formerly a UCLA, Sean in the NFL. Is there? Most Maybe. passes defended in the conference coming into the game and turned into a great cover corner. Just didn't get the publicity that his buddy Browner did at the other side, but probably outplayed him this year. Four interceptions as well as 12 breakups. Third down and two for Clemens and the Ducks. Kellen under pressure, hit as he throws, going to get a first down. Whitehead, a little bit of a safety valve. You know, Oregon State incorporating a lot of delayed blitzes from their linebackers. 
What happens when the ball is snapped, they'll hesitate off the ball, not bring an immediate blitz, sort of wait back and then bring that extra pressure on Clemens, forcing him to get rid of the ball early, often coming unaccounted for because the linemen don't recognize that delayed blitz. Clemens turns and throws, completes a pass. That's Kyle Weatherspoon, a sophomore. Hey, folks, tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday returns. Got a doubleheader beginning with America's number one pregame show. Then we got the Cowboys. They've been struggling. Try to get back on track. They take on the Ravens. After that, Michael Vick and the first place Falcons score off against the Giants as we see Eli Manning in his first NFL start. Other regional action then also for you. It's Fox NFL Sunday beginning at nine, noon in the East, 9 Pacific. Fox Sports High Def only on Fox. Whitehead's been busy. He's in the backfield. Run 18 times for over 110 yards. Caught four balls. Clemens scrambling around. Throws it away. Six minutes, 19 seconds as we're playing out the string here in Corvallis. As the Pac-10 winding down with their rivalry games. In another successful year throughout the conference. We congratulate Tom Hansen and his whole crew for all that they have done to bring quality football to the folks in the West. And they have a good chance of getting some serious cash flow, too, with two BCS teams. No question. That's, all, that's, always that's nice what it's all about. Always a nice infusion to the conference, isn't it? A little dance by Clements to get around and then a drop. Dante Rosario was looking upfield, forgot the football. Third down upcoming. Now the first down line is being brought to you by Overstock.com. Save up to how much? 70% every day, because it's all about still. I'm getting better at that. I'm getting better at that. Third down and 10. Clemens, here comes a lot of black shirts. Down he goes. A lot of stunting going on. Sir Henry Anderson, the junior out of Oakland, a JC guy that made great strides this year. He succeeded Juan Edwards inside and did a great job doing it. Six and a half sacks, six sacks. Six times now Clemens has gone down to the Reeser Stadium turf. The, the most sacks in the conference, 40. 40 on the season. They will lead the conference in that dubious distinction. Pressure up the middle by Seeger and Anderson in the face of Clemens. Stoddard. And he's going to go down at about the 38-yard line. Defensive player of the game. This is an easy call, too. 9-0. Bill Swancutt, he plays fast. He has an interception. He has a reception. And he's been the emotional leader tonight. That is absolutely primal. Our Cooper Tires defensive player of the game. Six tackles, three sacks, an interception, but don't forget that reception on the fake field goal. That was a key play in the first half. What a career. As I mentioned, this is a dream way to go out. Senior day for the players at Oregon State. Oh, big hit in the backfield. Ryan Cole just can't get on track. That's Jerry Matz. Inspiration the leader. The only returning starter of that linebacker group. The, they were worried about him, but the, the two seniors, Reed and Madsen, stepped up. I was expecting a little bit more of this linebacker blitzes in the second half, considering that Derek Anderson had so much time to throw in the first half. Even the blitzes that they have been able to execute, they've still not been able to get pressure on Derek Anderson. Did a nice job of picking up the blitzes and reading by Derek Anderson, hitting his hot receivers when necessary, and also getting the necessary pass protection from his line. Beavers won the chess match in that regard. Ryan Cole. As I mentioned, it's never easy for Ryan. Battles for every inch he can get. 
set up a, a long third down. The party is just starting here in Corvallis. They don't need a, a sweater, a jacket, or anything else. A warm feeling going on around the student section. Well, it's been emotional. They've been jumping around in the student section. I don't know if it's to get this team started or make sure that they stay warm, but this has been an electric crowd from the beginning of this game. It's a highly anticipated game, obviously. A lot on the line. Yeah, two, There's always a lot of excitement in the Civil War. Two great fan bases. You're not going to get a, a more rowdy no. crowd than you are down at Oxen, I'll tell you that. Not more loyal that's, either. Yeah, that's, a, that's a difficult place to play for the opposing team. All the reason the more was such a shock last week when they went down to UCLA. Bruins uh, really came in and took care of business. And I think that's another reason that Oregon State is now going to get the new facilities, try to create the same type of atmosphere that they have down at Austin Stadium. Of course, a very loud crowd, one of the toughest, if not the toughest place to play in the Pac-10. Fourth down and eight. And the Bees will punt it away, and we come up on the three-minute mark. And this ball is touched dead at the 13-yard line. It's time to go back and uh, relive some of the sights and sounds of this year's Civil War. stuff from uh, our great crew here Kyle Reisling our ringleader and we thank everyone top to bottom everyone equal on this crew and we thank them for all their hard work on a cool night I think the most affected is my partner John Jackson we got to just get you at some point you're cold <laughs> when we're in Los Angeles definitely <laughs> California definitely a California native you definitely are they're chuckling at you somewhere up here why I didn't go to Oregon, Oregon State. Oh, is that why? Wouldn't they be able to survive, my friend? Did they want you? They did. They did. Recruited by both. Who are the coaches back then? Up here. You remember? Wow. That's tough. That's jogging your memory. That is. John Jackson, of course, for the uninitiated, my partner, a University of Southern California grad. Rich Brooks for Oregon. All right. Give me some time for Oregon State. Dixon will come in. We mentioned him. He's the freshman, 2003 signee who enrolled last January. He has some great running skills. And he'll get a few snaps in. Of course, he'll be backing up Clemens again next year. Terrence Whitehead still out on the field. 242. Oregon and the Ducks know that this one is over like to get a couple more positive plays in they will end their year at five and six overall four and four in the conference they will not have 11 consecutive winning seasons and they will not go to a bowl game after going for nine consecutive years Dixon these are the running skills that we heard about he's gonna get a couple run out of bounds 212 to play over 37,000 in attendance here. Not a record. The record here, 41,000. I'm still trying to figure out how you can get 4,000 more There's in this no place. no way. Let's have some auxiliary stand or they put them on the roof. <laughs> they had to have people standing. That's true shoehorn job to get them in here. There's no way 4,000 people could fit. 4,000 more. Extra people could fit into the stadium. Turnovers. Coach Bellotti told us before the game that turnovers would be the key to this game, and it has. In the last five games, Oregon State has been able to turn over, turn around their turnover margin by plus seven. Yeah, they both came into both the game teams. even, even in the in the, the turnover margin department. And he explained that that was the key to the game. If there's one stat that Coach Bellotti pays attention to, it is turnover turnover margin. That is usually indicative of the winner, and that is held true again tonight. 
Pilates had a, enough of great seasons here that this one can be excused, that's for sure. Oh, almost picked off. Derek Doggett, he's a freshman out of the San Diego area. <laughs> Shaking his head. How can I miss that? Right there. I do it all the time in practice. Game's a little different. Things nope. are just going a little bit faster. Oregon State will have the opportunity to try to break this eight-game home winning streak for the home team. Last time they won in Eugene was 1993 when they won 15 to 12. We saw a little celebrating on the sideline. I think somebody might have gotten an early shower. Spinning for a couple of extra yards. Anderson, he's having a game to remember, his final home game. There'll be a lot of hugs around. He came out pumped up, and, you know, he sometimes you can come up a little too keyed up. He really let that emotion play in, was, was really jacked up as far as being ready for the game, but was calm as far as his decision-making. Well, you got to walk that fine line. And he, he certainly did it. And he gains that with experience. You know, years ago, he was playing strictly on emotion. Now he's playing much smarter, making much better decisions. Dixon will fire it away. Towards the far side, battle for, flag down. Maxwell, the intended receiver. Piscatelli. Unless they're going to call it the other way. Piscatelli seems to think so. Marcus Maxwell's a senior. This is Oregon State. <laughs> Maxwell trying to get a catch here before he says goodbye to his Oregon career. Get him in with 25 grabs. Piscatelli, no reason to get that upset. He's a sophomore going to a bowl game. All right, the uh, the bath, the orange energy drink bath. And yeah, notice the guys pouring it on are seniors. You have Swan cut in Anderson. Now these two guys are, they may stay up for three, four days. Yeah. I, don't think, I don't think they're sleeping for three, four days. Yeah, but Billy, that's a well-calculated Gatorade shower. If that's an underclassman, you know, Riley has a chance to get back at you. Yeah. Being a senior, you know, you're out of here. It's your last game, and the coach just has to take it. Take one for the team. The bowl game's for fun. Dixon, dancing, prancing. Out of bounds. Took a bit of a hit. Minute 19 remaining. So remember, we don't know where Oregon State will go in the postseason. Uh, they, tough, uh, they face one of the toughest schedules in the nation early on. They battled back to get into the postseason, the bowl game. You, you think maybe the Sun Bowl, but that'll be for everyone else. You, folks at home can probably figure it out as the weeks go on. Now we talked about how exciting the fans are under the field. Well, they've already asked them. them to, to, they, that's not going to help. They, they've asked them to stay back, that's but not that's gonna not going to happen. Yeah, you can see them help. pouring out onto the field. As soon as this game is over, they will overtake I will say this. Stadium. They do the field as well as anybody in America. The way they come on the field. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm condoning it. I'm just saying. I've seen it happen a few times here. Rivalry games across the country. And I know the houses were divided in Oregon tonight. The, team is, uh, the home team has now won the last eight games. So the Oregon State fans in the household get to rule the roost at least for a while. There's a long throw incomplete. Up amongst those students. Not quite as happy. The green of Oregon. And I hate to be redundant here, but I'm going to be anyway. The program of Oregon, and we're not just trying to flower things up. Too solid, too good, to stay down. And they've got players in place for next year that and another great recruiting class you would suspect from Coach Pilati and his whole staff will be out there working hard, but they'll be right back near the top. Dixon has some room. Here he goes. 30-yard line inside the 25, right at the first down stick with a minute seven remaining. Well, the Ducks will return eight starters on defense and six on offense and that is including the quarterback Clemens, Demetrius Williams, Day and will also return. Oregon State in the conference five and three, six and five. Want to circle that six? Yep. 
Circling. They have made there, it you've there. Christened. There, there. You've given. You, you've made they them now officially official. bowl eligible. They are official. Of course, the Bruins will also get in. They're six and four with another big game to play against the Trojans two weeks from now. Dixon throws. Oh, is it going to be intercepted? Chuckles. And then even at the last minute, that ball nearly fell into the hands of Musin, who was lying on his back. And Oregon State is going to say goodbye to some very good players as well. Musin, the all-time leading interception for the career from Oregon State. Swan Cut leads in sacks. Anderson in every passing category. So, you know, they're going to lose some talent as for Oregon State a year from now. Of course, they have a bowl game still to play. Pass will be back, though. He's only a junior. But we saw the two coaches on a split screen as uh, we set up here for a second down play. And, and I mentioned, if you're with us at the very top of the show, the very top of the show is that these two schools don't like each other. There's a certain edge to Oregon, Oregon State that doesn't exist in some others. But I'll tell you this. Those two coaches, a lot of respect for each other. No question. A lot of respect for each other. No question. What they have done for each of their schools is really amazing. Mike Riley in his second state here at Oregon State was on the way to building a winner before he left and now of course they have a winning program here and Mike Lottie his record goes speak for itself he's been phenomenal in his 10 years of coaching and the first year he will not make a bowl game is this year penalty flag will advance the ball for Oregon so they'll have a first down with 44 seconds left to play at about the 12 yard line. See, that's that's really the only beauty of a blowout. I get to give you a little extra air time here in the final minute. Just to expand a little bit. Well, uh, the headset is off. The, uh, speech to Coach Riley, and Coach Pilati, the congratulatory remarks are upcoming. Here's Dixon, quarterback draw, trying to find the end zone. Oregon wants to get in here. They do have a couple of timeouts. I'm wondering whether they'll spend them or not to try to get into the end zone. The clock is moving. Coach Pilates thinking about it. Just wants to make sure they, they quickly run a play. I don't think he wants to call the timeout here. Second and four. Of course, you've got a freshman quarterback running, so he's not as in tune and getting things up to the line quickly. And coming up on 10 seconds, they're counting it down. You know, if they don't get it in on this play, the crowd may be on the field anyway. Up the middle. Now kicking it outside. This is going to be the final play of the game. The Civil War belongs to Oregon State. There was a flag on the final play, but I'll tell you this. Game's over. As 30,000 people pour onto the field, congratulations, Mike Riley, his team, came out ready to play. They defend the home field for the Civil War. Once again, Derek Anderson, a phenomenal career, and will go on to the NFL to be a great quarterback. Way, Oregon on, finishes go, their go, year go, at 5-6, 4-4 four and four in the conference. Oregon State, 6-5, and five, and they're going to a bowl game representing the Pac-10. Well, that's going to do it from Corvallis, Oregon. Final score, 50-21, Beavers the 108th edition of the Civil War. Make sure to tune in on Friday for a special edition of College Football Saturday. Number 20, Arizona State and Andrew Walter. They take on rival Arizona in the duel in the desert. For John Jackson, I'm Bill McDonald. Thanks to our entire crew, and thank you saying so long. Thanks for watching exclusive coverage of the Pac-10.